and we welcome you to this edition of Night Shift, the post-game edition. Eric Lopez alongside Bryson Turner. Hope to be joined by a cast of thousands uh, throughout here as the Knights open the 2023 football season with a 56-6 demolishing of Kent State. We'll break down the game, what our thoughts are in this opener for the Knights as they go to 1-0. Hope to carry some of Gus Malzahn's post-game press conference for you. Plus, this was a busy day of UCF Athletics. Volleyball at home earlier in the day in their home debut this season, sweeping FIU. Women's soccer in a big match uh, just ended against Penn State and Happy Valley. What, top 10 ranked Penn State there, Bryson? Number six. Uh, dropped a one nothing decision. We'll break that down as well. Eric Lopez alongside Bryson Turner joining us here. Send your comments and questions over to us. We will address all your questions as we always do. Of course, you can watch our Night Shift show on the YouTube channel, uh, social, all social media platforms, as well as our podcast feed. This will be on our podcast feeds uh, as well the following day for every UCF football post game. After every UCF football game, we'll have a cast of thousands, like I said, uh, involved in every show. So we hope to be joined by Andrew Glukoff here momentarily in a little bit, getting his things uh, resolved, and uh, it should be interesting there. Kyle Nash is at the football game. Uh, he'll join us after the press conferences are over with his thoughts. He'll write a recap, his thoughts on that, on blackandgoldbanneret.com. We'll have post-game coverage there as well. And then uh, even our boy Nick Porcelli, right, was at the game as a fan. So we'll see if he joins us, although he has a long walk. He made a mistake, a rookie mistake, Bryce, and he stayed for the whole game. You know, you gotta, well, to be you gotta... fair, I mean, he got to see some action from the likes of Timmy McClain, Demarcus Bowman. He got to see the, a lot of the team, a lot of the team play. All right, let's get into it. Knights win 56-6. This was never really a game. Uh, UCF toy with this was like a scrimmage. I joked about this on the podcast. You guys give me a lot of grief, Bryce, about this. When I refer to these games as scrimmages, but this is what this was. This was a scrimmage. It counts. It's a win. And I liked a lot of things I, I saw, but at the same time, Kent State is really bad. They return no starters. They don't return their coach. There's a reason why I think Sean Lewis went to be a Deion Sanders' staff. Uh, why don't you give the audience here kind of your quick thoughts and read some of the stats? We have the stats up for those that are watching on our social media platform. This was an, an annihilation. Good balance. I really liked Darren Hinshaw's play calling. I don't think you can criticize any of the play calling. Uh, I And I thought the depth of UCF offensively was good. I know some people are asking about the secondary. We'll address that as well. But, yeah, hey, Bryson, your thoughts. I, I thought it was fine. I thought they did what they had to do. They were the superior team. And, um I'm sure people will nitpick stuff, but overall, it's a good start, don't you, don't you think? I think so. I think it's not a perfect start. John Rice Plumley, of course, had that fumble and a couple of interceptions, and those are those are kinks that you can probably work out a little later. But I think all in every other facet of his game, I've seen some kind of improvement from last season we saw him running out of bounds a little more not all the time but which but a little but a little more which is progress you also saw better throwing on the run you saw a rushing attack that was just absolutely devastating for this Kent State offense of the five running backs listed on the depth chart four of them scored a touchdown the one that didn't was the leading rusher Johnny Richardson who got a hundred yards on the on the night and oh yeah xavier townsend guy caught 127 receiving yards all season in 2022 he gets 81 in this game alone with some honestly really highlight worthy plays all the all the way through is it i think this i if any if there is anyone that had a breakout game tonight i think it's him on offense it's, it's xavier townsend he he just refused to go down. The yards after catch worked in very well in his favor. A lot of UCF players actually did really succeed with the yards after the catch. And as much as Darren Henshaw has been saying that they're going to that they're going to air the ball out, I truly think that this offense's biggest weapons are the playmakers that can rack up that yak. 
I think uh, I, I think that was one of their biggest strengths last year, and I think it's uh, once again one of their big bigger strengths this year. Yeah, I, everybody jumped. Everybody got all like you know jumped on that statement about airing it out. Every offensive coordinator that gets hired is always going to do that. I don't think that's the strength, nor they should have to do that that much. You, I agree with you. There, there's playmakers here. Just make the right plays, right? The make the, the reads. I think is what I would ask. Uh, if I'm John Rice Plumley and the quarterbacks uh, as well, what do you think of Jimmy McClain? Because I mean, you you know, let's be real. It was I I really was it was nice for a change to see another quarterback play and not have to worry about whether they're redshirting him or not. So that was nice. But I thought Jimmy McClain got important reps because if John Rice Plumley something happens to him, Jimmy McClain's the next guy. So I think that's the one and one of the other big things too is a lot of guys got to play today and got some experience. And with Moore, he's jumped in right now from his home. He got to watch the game with his wife, who was the superstar of the watch-along last year on Night Shift, really. She is the the queen of Night Shift. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, uh, Mrs. Andrew Glukoff. But Andrew Glukoff joining us here. All right, Drew, give me your thoughts here. A few minutes digest this. Obviously, we'll – pick some of the specific areas in the game but overall 56 to 6 a lot of players played i mean this is what we wanted right a blowout with a lot of players getting to play well i'll be honest i would have pulled the starters at the end of the third quarter i mean this game was pretty in hand uh i'm a big fan of if you're gonna get your your yet next unit those young guys playing but the possibility of of keeping a red shirt on some of the young guys give them a full quarter if you're gonna use a whole game, give them a full quarter. Uh, I, that was my, 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 my biggest, you know, er moment uh, of the game was, was actually that, you know, it wasn't some of the errant throws or errant moves. Cause I mean, you know, things are still kind of working itself out as, as, as you get now uh, game experience against an actual team. That's not your own. Uh, but I mean, th- this is exactly what should have happened. What happened is what we expected to happen. I mean, Kent State was a team that was literally gutted. Uh, No returning starters on offense from last year. I mean, new coach. I mean, this team was basically a hodgepodge of castaways. Uh, So they were never meant to be competitive. I mean, it was a, what, 34-point spread? It It was a scrimmage, Drew. You guys give me a hard time. I said it on the podcast. This was a scrimmage. But it, but it's not. It's it's a game. It counts. That's the thing about scrimmages. Scrimmages, you can play, you know, half of it and just like you know what, we've seen enough. We're done. Uh, this this is an actual game. And even against an FCS opponent, like you'll see in a couple weeks against Villanova, uh, it's still a game that actually matters. It, it counts towards the stands. Sure, it's not going to be close, but you know what? There's value to that. With with you know getting the the second unit in there and, and whatnot and and working things out, trying new things and, and you know this being uh, the kickoff of the of the season, you got a big game next week. Uh, you you got to keep it a little bit close to the vest. I mean they they didn't go too outside of you know of the norm. You know oh the you know you know running a wildcat not a big deal. Anytime you see a running back on the field, you, you know what's going to happen. We're going to be running back. Uh, and and let, let's be honest, Jordan, Jordan McDonald's a wrecking ball. Uh, so anytime he's on, I, that was probably the most, the biggest wrinkle you saw. Oh, yeah, oh they ran a reverse. I mean, that's the, those are the biggest wrinkles you saw in this offense all day. Uh, I do have some concerns, though. Uh, the underneath pass defense was very, very um, suspect. Gave up a lot of plays, a lot of yards. Uh you know, stuff underneath. Now, they didn't give up the big play. You also had a very inaccurate quarterback who really couldn't hit anything. Uh, you know, put a, put them against a better quarterback. You got to do better on your pass coverage on the on the underneath stuff. Uh, the offensive line, work in progress. You know, they at times they looked good. At times they looked not so good. I think they, they just need a little more playing time together. Uh, you know, Bola Schmidt moved from center to guard. Uh, you know, that obviously there's an adjustment there. And, and I think they're still kind of working things out. This is a, a team that has three new starters. So you, you're going to have uh, some some disconnect at times. But altogether, this game basically went exactly how we expected it to. 
you know, I was, I'm, I'll was i rebut on this, Eric, is that when UCF scheduled this game, they were not expecting a scrimmage because of just how college scheduling works. You never expect a gimme game like this when you schedule – a group of five, a group of five like this. I mean, obviously, you want something that you want to win, but I mean, there's a difference between you know scheduling a comp- a, a opponent that'll you know do do fairly well competitively, and then a team that just got completely just gutted, like Kent State did, as as you said. But yeah, I mean, I think there wasn't really a lot about Kent State that was work that was working on. Alimo was looked okay sometimes. I think Glass did a solid job on that on that on that field goal. I think that was all right as well. And Kent State's defense was able to pick up a couple of turnovers. Credit to him on that. Credit to him on that one. Plumley overall, I mean, Plumley went twenty two with thirty twenty two with thirty. Two of those being interceptions. I mean. Honestly, I think you get those you get those turnovers down, and that that could make for a really good season for a good season for a guy for a guy like him. Well, Bryson, think about it. those two turnovers were forced throws. They, they they were they were one was thrown on the run, and and one was just you know attempting to thread a little too much. Uh, those are forced throws, uh, and and that's coachable. You know, uh, we we saw a definite change in his accuracy and his progressions between last year and this year. I mean, he was you know working down the check down. He was staying in the pocket more. The pocket's collapsing. He's standing tall. This, he didn't do that last year. He tuck and ran. Uh, you know, that is a massive improvement over last year. I thought his mechanics were better than last year at this point. Oh, absolutely. Overall. Absolutely. And, and yes, you know, did he make some bonehead decisions? Absolutely. But I mean, Rome wasn't built in a day, but I, I have to be, I'm pleased with some of the progress that he has made. Uh, you know, there's still work to be done. Uh, but, you know, this at least shows that the the work that uh, Darren Hinshaw's working with him is, is you know, paying off. Uh, you're seeing a more poised quarterback not just an athlete who's throwing the ball. Uh, and that's what UCF needs. They need a quarterback. They, they didn't fully have one last year. You know, they had an athlete who, who could sling. Uh, but he, he, stood, he stood tall. He, he had poise. And, and you need that. You can't fear the hit and, you know, behind the line of scrimmage. And he did a great job with it. I agree. Uh, again, and I wrote about this on Black and Gold Banner I mean, a couple weeks ago about Darren Henshaw. I think he's the right guy. For the quarterback coach position, I think he's an upgrade over Chip Lindsey with respect to Bryson's friend, Chip Lindsey. Uh, I do. I just think he's a big a fan of that. Let me get to some comments. People are already chiming in with some comments, rightfully so, right after the game. Fallen hero, the base legend. Good teams win, great teams cover, but the secondary has me nervous. Drew, are you nervous, the secondary? Well, ball? I mean, I already talked about how that underneath passing uh, defense was, was- – a little suspect that that's where Kent State got the bulk of their yardage was was through that. Uh, they're they're going to have to do something about it. Now I do like the fact that they did have some bump coverage, uh, which was uh, the equivalent of finding a unicorn in the Travis William defense. Now you're actually seeing it on a pretty regular basis where you have you know at least one up, one back. Uh, we're going to see more of that. Now the question is, will they start getting more aggressive with that? You know they they they. They sat, you know, played a lot of man coverage. They they did show a little man zone in there, which um, yeah, I thought was a really interesting wrinkle. Uh, needs to be practiced more. Uh, but zone coverage is, you know, is you can't just walk onto a field and play zone. You know that that takes a lot more work. But I, I think zone can really mess with the quarterback, especially when you disguise it. And and they tried doing that. Obviously, uh, Alimo from Kent State, uh, not. You know, not the quarterback caliber you're going to see from most of these other games that UCF's going to play. Uh, they're one of the worst teams in FBS. Uh, so th- it was an opportunity to at least try to kind of, you know, do a couple wrinkles in that. Uh, you know, you like to say it's a scrimmage. I, I disagree. But I, got, I I have to laugh a little bit at, at Bryson, you know, you know, so you're talking about, oh, look at the G5 school. I mean, talking like a P5 vet already. Yeah, <laughs> he is. He's he's learned. You better get used to it, Drew. We're the big boys now. Hey, it's, hey, it's look, life. my mom went to Kent State. Uh, yeah, 
back in back in the day. Uh, I've always been a big fan of the little guys. I will never abandon the little guys. I always root for the little guys. But you know, it's nice to sit at the big boy table now. Uh, Very Mike, true. Time in. Let me ask you, Mike, here with a comment. Thornton starting over Patterson is mind-boggling, especially after this game's performance. Drew, what's your thoughts on that? I, 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 I we haven't had a chance to talk, get your thoughts on the depth chart. A lot of people like to read in there. Your, your, your thoughts on Mike's comments there about Thornton starting over I, Patterson. I was surprised. I was surprised to see that he did not start because he's one of the guys I really want to see. Uh, you know, he looked outstanding at Middle Tennessee, um, was just an absolute ball hawk, and, and – Thornton is so hot and cold. He's very streaky. There are times when he looks great. There are times when he has, you know, gives up uh, more more yardage than you know than anyone else on the field. Uh, there's just it just yeah you, know, you don't know what you're getting. And uh, I I would have preferred to see you know a switch there just from a veteran standpoint. But you know what? That was game one. We'll see what happens with game two. Who would you say, Drew and Eric, impressed you the most tonight on defense? Oh, on, on defense? Well, I, I mean, the defensive line looked, looked pretty pretty solid. I mean, you have such a great unit there. I mean, I, it's definitely the best group on, on defense this year. You know, uh, between Morris Brash and Salskar on the outside, you have, you know, Lee Hunter, who's, you know, he was good last year, but now he's just an absolute mammoth. Uh, you know, you have uh, Ricky Barber and then John Hunter, the freshman. I mean, he already he made a couple of plays. Uh, you're going to see a lot of him. I mean, this, this guy is just uh, yeah, John Walker. John Walker. Yeah, I, I don't know even what I said. I'm just so excited. Wait, you said John Hunter. Hunter. I think you're thinking confused. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm I'm getting you know the list. Dexia is kicking in or something. Uh, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, you know Hunter I, or, or Walker. <laughs> I'm doing it again. But but you know, freshman Walker. I just you know. This guy is, you know, you know, highly taught a recruit, and and you're seeing it on the field. I mean, he's he's a beast, and I think as he gets a little more experience, man, watch out, watch out next year. This guy's going to be the real deal. I honestly, what what the play that really stuck out to me, that that stuck out to me defensively, was Lee Hunter just all on his own tracking a limo down, all, all by himself, and almost. Getting had getting a bogus face mask called on called on him. Luckily, the official realized what had actually happened. But that play like that, Lee Hunter, by the way, six solo tackles out of the eight total he had all night. I will I agree with you on that. The defensive line was absolutely am amazing. But don't sleep on the linebackers either. Walter Yates getting seven tackles on uh, tackles on the night as well, and Jason Johnson of the three tackles he made, two of them were on his own i i i will they did i noticed that they also managed to get tj bullard out there a little bit so you got a little bit of the the depth what do you think about as far as the the depth of this defense because obviously you, you know i kind of said this in the round table i feel like you kind of need some depth on defense in order to stand to be able to keep up with a high power big 12 offenses that we're going to see this season so what do you think we saw in terms of that well, outside of the the running backs and wide receivers last year, depth was a problem in every position group. Uh, that was a, a program wide problem, and and they seek to address this. Uh, now every every unit has a certain level of depth. Uh, I I think you know the defensive backs. I, I they you know because there's such a it was such a radical change between what they used to play. And what they play now, as far as scheme, uh, you know, there's going to be learning curves involved, and I think that's going to open the door for more mistakes. We did see some of them. Uh, a lot of those defensive plays were more of the fact that the quarterback just couldn't hit the target, more so than the defensive back making a play. Uh, so I don't think they were heavily tested. Uh, I want to see more of them. And we'll definitely get a chance to see them next week when when they travel to to face Boise State. But yeah, the defensive backfield, I'm I'm not satisfied with uh, the depth of it. You know, as far as how they play, you know, what they did, I'm not satisfied with it. I, I'm thrilled with how the line did. I'm thrilled with how the linebackers did. But but give me more from the defensive backfield. Give me more plays defended. Uh, you know. 
give me you know tighter coverage and, and don't rely on the fact of you have an inaccurate quarterback for incompletions uh, because that's that's what they did. Well, how, how right. you know, the press conference is airing on going to be airing on ESPN Plus this year. Interesting post game. They're calling it the fifth quarter. A lot of controversy tonight, by the way, with ESPN, Disney, and uh, you know. Oh my God! Operator. So, yeah. Oh, so for those who live in a cave, I have it. Yeah. Holy so those who live in a cave, uh, and this affected Tampa, Orlando, and other areas. Basically, About fifteen million people, from what I heard. Yeah. Spectrum, yeah, maybe one of them. Yes, yeah, Spectrum lost the basically Disney. The Disney company pulled their content off spectrum now the question is who actually pulled what uh that's up for debate we don't we don't really know who pulled the plug on who uh but the plug was pulled right as the florida at utah game was kicking off tonight uh which obviously would piss off a lot of people now i have access to espn uh, on a spectrum account and i have access to espn on a direct tv stream account so luckily if I want to turn on ESPN, I have a backup plan. But I'll tell you one thing. Watching Florida lose is great. I did, did it for about five minutes before jumping on here. But there is nothing better than watching a UCF win. I'll tell you what. Of all, the, of all the times for UCF to get back on FS1 for the first time in years, tonight was probably was the perfect night for that to happen. Yeah. Well, they're going to be on. And they're going to be on FS1 next week, UCF at Boise State. an FS1 Saturday night game. By the way, the same crew tonight. Eric Collins and Devin Garter will be calling the UCF Boise State game. Whether they'll actually be in Boise or not, who knows? Yeah, Devin Gardner's got to lay off the monsters, man. That guy was like all over the place. He um he was very yeah. excitable. <laughs> very excitable. Uh, let's go to more comments. A good friend of ours, Brian W. Peterson. I'm just gonna call him Brian W. Peterson because that's how we, we know him for Mr. Brian Peterson. Do you feel like this was a real night and day difference? Mm. I mean, it really depends on what you on where you're asking. That's very subjective. Um, what's your baseline? Um, the, the the problem is you play such a bad team. It's not really night and day. It's you beat up a bad team. I mean, this but is what you did see some good things. This is what you're supposed to do. I mean, we sure. I mean, we saw some solid promise, like Jordan McDonald as a Wildcat QB. That looks very interesting to see, and it looked pretty good to start i'll be i'm interested to see where that goes going forward we saw xavier townsend yeah. really ball out as well so i mean we did see a little bit of that but i mean nothing uh, nothing that but like again because we're beating up on a bad team i don't know how substantive you really want to be with that kind of thing yeah, I, think I mean you have to be pleased with some of the things like 73.3 percent that was plumley's completion rate you have to be pleased with that it's the don't force it in moments that he still has to work because all of his turnovers were force it moments where he right. just, you know, don't be a hero. Hero ball. How much, of, but how much of that, Drew, do you think is because, you know, I remember when I spoke to Darren Hinshaw at the media day and we JRP on media day, the one of the messages to him is, you know, don't be a hero and run every place. I'm wondering if, if he's now trying to overcompensate, I'm not going to run, but I'm going to force a throw instead. Could that be a factor in some of that decision? I'm not excusing the decision, but I'm just saying, is he it, because they, the, the, the message is don't run carelessly, don't just run, through, you know, look, you know, live to play another day. And what he's now trying to do, at least on those particular plays, he's trying to force a throw instead of maybe trying to run or throwing it away, which is what he should throw it away is probably what she should do in that scenario. Well, yeah, like um, he, he had that touchdown to Alec Holler that if he put, any more loft on that thing, the defender would have actually had a chance to make a play on it. I mean, that thing was soft. Uh, that's one of the times it was maybe a little too soft. Uh, he just has to learn about the right time for the right touch. You know, you, you throw into the, you know, you know, with a guy on inside coverage, you throw to the outside shoulder, get to the corner, make it to where your guy or no guy is making that play. And when you're throwing on the run, it's so much more difficult, unless you're Michael Vick, where you actually throw better on the run. But he's he's the exception to the rule. Most 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 people, you know, don't throw nearly as well on the run, 
And as a result, because he was rolling to the right, he threw the ball drifted to the right because he overcompensated the throw. And thus it may, there was a play to be made because the defender was on the inside shoulder of the receiver. Uh, you just have to, you know, compensate for those, you know, for, for those facts, you know, you know, if you're going to try and make a play, but you know, aim for the corner, don't aim for the receiver. You know, you've got enough space that the receiver can move. Uh, you know, you have to have a little more faith in your guy and you have to have, be a little more cognizant of the defenses around you. Remember, John Rice Plumley is not a polished quarterback. I mean, last year he was very raw, uh, you know, relied more on his physical, you know, skills than anything else. Uh, you, you saw a little bit tonight, and I think as the season goes on, you're going to see pieces of it come together. Uh, but it doesn't happen overnight, and and Hinshaw had his work cut out. For him. There was a lot of work to be done on, on Plumley, and I think there still is. Uh, Garrett Weiss uh, with a question here or comment. JRP and play calling is the same. Need to be better. Uh, I disagree. I disagree. I'm yeah. both. Yeah, especially the play calling. I thought the play calling was fine. I don't know what people want. I mean, it's you're not gonna like empty the tank against Kent State. I mean, that would be okay. You don't need to do that. But I didn't. I didn't question any of the play calling, and I think JRP was better than last year. Yes, I think you are hard, but I, I don't. I don't agree with that. Uh, I don't agree with it at all, and I'm pretty sure Bryson doesn't either. I thought it was really interesting that the about the variety of plays because I noticed that in the first quarter it was very UC fast in that first quarter, and then he slowed it down a little more for the second quarter. I feel like because I know you called this a scrimmage, a scrimmage, Eric, and through, considering how much they you beat up on a team like this, this is an opportunity for Darren Hinshaw to really try some things because now in a game setting with the stakes now. You know, kind of the game being very, mostly in hand from r earlier on than maybe what a n normal game would be. So, getting the chance to kind of test out that sort of thing, such as the what I'm now going to call the old McDonald had a old old McDonald had a wildcat formation. So, ha getting a chance to test things like that out, test test things like new players out. It just an opportunity to really feel this offense out, and I think that they did that fairly well tonight. You didn't like the gif of Ron Jeremy on the wrecking ball? Not particularly. <laughs> I I personally like I personally like uh, reference humor more so than anything. Like the Bowser Bowser with uh, Bowser with Mario Bowser was perfect. So why not go ahead and do Jordan McDonald with old McDonald? Uh, I, 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 it's, it's not crass enough for me. Not class enough. All right, we got a new listener viewer here, Brian Vale, chiming in. Both throws should have been put out there. Just more air to give his guy a chance to catch it. One on one, we have a lot of advantages. Thoughts on what Brian Vale has to say there? Well, against Kent State, absolutely. I'm one on one. I wasn't even close. Uh, but I mean, the general rule is if you've got a guy running down the sideline or close to the sideline, you know, defense is going to cover the inside because it's more of the field. You get the ball to the outside and you put it in the place that either your guys can get or no one's going to get it. Uh, you know, that comes with uh, getting, you know, learning the touch of, of being a good quarterback. And and John Rice still has work to do on that. Uh, we got uh, Well Well 32 chiming in. Does this go down <laughs> as the first 50 point win in NCAA history where fans are more distraught than they are encouraged? Uh, yeah, I, 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 I think it's just that, you know, we UCF fans need therapy. <laughs> I, I I don't know about that because my 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 dad's a my dad is a Georgia fan, and after Georgia played Kent State last year, you have no idea how mad he was. And they went on to win the national championship. Yeah, but that was actually a close game. That I think it was a seventeen point game or something. It was it was actually pretty close. And the truth was, Kent State two years ago was playing for a MAC championship. They weren't bad. It's just they're bad this year. They're real bad this year. Uh, but I, the worst team in the MAC. I mean, really. I mean, you joked. I mean, that could be an FCS quad team right there. I don't know. If they could. Uh, some FCS, FCS quads could beat them. them. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're they're basically a hodgepodge of of you know castoffs. Um, so I mean, you you have no idea what this team is capable of doing. Uh, UCF underscore realist is Jason Johnson hurt? Didn't see much of him in the second half. Well, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't read too much into that. Uh, uh, we, we'll ask Kyle Nash when he joins us from the stadium if uh, there's any chatter there about Jason Johnson. Uh, but 
I mean, you mentioned this earlier, Drew. I agree. I think some of these guys take them out as quickly as you can when this game is uh, out of hand. So I don't know if that played a factor here. I don't know if uh, you caught you caught anything there of no true. Well, I mean, I know Walter Yates and uh, and Ryan Davis were going to get a lot of playing time. So uh, my guess is they pulled Johnson uh, j- just because they didn't need him. Uh, you know, I, I would, as again, as I said earlier, I would have preferred they pulled all the starters before the fourth quarter even started. But I think mean, the, the truth was, um, you know, the, the other linebackers kind of held their own. Uh, you know, but again, we'll 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 poke Kyle about that uh, when he comes on later. Uh, Chris Marazzo, another new listener uh, tuning in here. Spectrum has until 923 to get this resolved. That's obviously the first date possible that UCF football will play on an ESPN platform. Which is uh, no guarantee that they will. It's not a guarantee, but if you – I mean, so far, UCF obviously will be on FS1 the first two weeks. Villanova is an ESPN Plus game. Which is still available for those who have a subscription. Aren't you glad about that? Trust me, you can watch other UCF sports on ESPN Plus, like volleyball. Like volleyball match. Yeah, though. Friday night against Mississippi State. And or wait for it Saturday just, night. Or you can watch replays like the one that you called earlier today. With me and Aaron Campbell. That is correct. Bing. Plug Drew. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> not, but, but that's the Kansas State game that we're, I mean, he's alluding to UCF at Kansas State, September 23rd. What's interesting, I believe, and Bryce, you can correct me on this and double check, but I believe Fox has already announced that Oklahoma at Cincinnati is a Fox Big Noon game that fate on the 23rd. So I think there's some thinking that perhaps UCF Kansas State will be an ESPN type of game. Now, again, to your point, Drew, that's not necessarily guaranteed. That could end up being FS1 or Fox or whatever. We will not know that until about September 9th weekend, probably – uh, a week from this Monday, we'll probably know when that Kansas State game will uh, be on. But listen, I get it done because the, it, Spectrum and they better figure it out because there's people mad like me that watch the U.S. Open tennis. The NFL is going to get going, college football in full swing. I mean, this was all timed uh, and calculated to some extent to get people ticked off and it's work. But I, I'm going to tell you, cable companies, you better figure it out because you don't have the leverage, right? Because Drew has pretty much painted the scenario what you do in a situation like you were prepared, Drew, for this. Oh, well, I mean, yeah, I I cut spec from years ago. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't even have them for internet. Uh, I, I cut them out completely. I mean, as you know, uh, you know, in Florida, you only have a very limited selection of choice. Uh, things like internet, electricity, you know, you don't, you know, in some cases you don't even have choice. Uh, so you're a lot of times you're at the mercy of these companies. Well, in this case, you're not, uh, you know, YouTube TV is available. And the cool thing about these companies are, are, you know, the cool thing is, uh, there's no contracts. You can just jump if you really wanted to, you can just jump over. Heck you can, you know, while, while, you know, if you're willing to spend the money, if you want to just get YouTube TV while, keeping your other service for just a little bit, you know, just pay, you know, the extra just to deal with it. You can do that. Um, so there are ways around it. Um, there's also uh, streaming sites that you can go through, which of course I will not tell you any, but they are out there. Or the, you mean, the, you know, the streaming sites that I may have allegedly or not allegedly been on during the, watching the Florida Utah game. Oh, <laughs> I mean, I've what, watched what, many, I may have watched many an NFL game through that. Uh, uh, but that's besides <laughs> point. Uh, I would never encourage anyone to do such. But, well, let me let me ask you. This. Uh, let's change it from this standpoint. What did you think of the FS1 production overall? What did you think of the overall broadcast, Drew? I mean, are you getting oh, to watch? The, the bug is awful. I mean, that isn't reminds, it like? Oh God, and why is the UCF thing? Is the UCF logo like tilted, or am I? Is the that whole, just my head? Oh, yes, tilted. It is. I. It's so funny. I ought to, okay. I will just say this. I do kind of like the aesthetic that they're trying for. I actually, I maybe I'm in the minority here. I liked the the aesthetic they were going for. The issue is, is that the slanted logos ruined it for me. It oh no, you are definitely in the minority here. That was absolute gutter trash. Uh, there is a case of less is more. You are taken away from the game, and God forbid you use closed captioning because you will see none of it. You know of that bottom 
if you have closed caption on them. So, I mean, that that is absolute garbage. I mean, last year they had a little spot in the upper left, just like they had it for the NFL. That was perfect. They had everything you needed there. And then you can put up at the bottom when you have little stats that you need to put up. This big splash that got that screams 1990s ESPN2. I mean, screw that. I mean, that's absolute Bush League nonsense. All right. Uh, more comments. Matt J. Don't ever recall our second string dominating an opponent this much. Looks like, unlike the deep shot deception by Hinshaw, we may actually have some solid depth on this team. What do you think of that? What do you think of the backups? Obviously, I mentioned earlier, Timmy McClain got some good reps there. Uh, well, give, give me I your mean, thoughts on the backups here. They, they looked pretty good, but, um, you know, this is the biggest domination I've seen since Temple of last year. I mean, um, <laughs> yeah, um, that's a little bit of recency bias there because the second string looked absolutely dominant against Temple. In fact, the third string did too. Uh, I wouldn't re read too much into this. Um, we know what Tamik McLean is about. We know what he can do. Uh, he's very, very athletic. Yeah. You know, there's a reason why he's the, the number two guy. Um, his problem was always polish and consistency. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of hard because he was playing against the second unit too. So I, I really can't put much stock. You know, it's like when Tommy Castellanos came in for Temple against Temple last year, everyone like, thought he was the second coming. And I was like, whoa, pump the brakes. He's beating up third stringers. And lo and behold, he went up against stars against Tulane and froze like a little kid in a play. Uh, I mean, you know, <laughs> Yes, he did. Uh, where is he now? Where is He's he in now? Boston College. Oh. With Ryan yeah. O'Keefe. Uh, Good so, luck with all that. Um, yeah. Well, I understand why Ryan went there. You know, um, he reunited with uh, his receiver's coach. Okay, Wyatt, right, right. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. Uh, but, I mean, yeah, he, he absolutely was not ready for prime time. And, and you know, the rest is history. Well, all I can say is they executed, I think, because, you know, that was one of the things Darren Hinshaw told us was each quarterback would have a package ready to go if needed when they were called to play in the game. So That's good prep work. I mean, I always thought yeah. – I was not a big fan of the job that Chip Lindsey did. I thought he just kind of mailed it in. Uh, he never uh, really got into into the weeds. Yeah, uh, Bryce. Hinshaw, you don't get, yeah, Hinshaw, he, he gets into it. Um, you know, yeah. Very different different styles. And, and I think this this, you know – young and hungry program fits the Hinshaw model better than Chip Lindsay. Chip Lindsay was a favor hire because, you know, he's buddy buddies with Gus Malzahn. I actually got to interview Chip went at the, at the peach bowl back in, in, you know, late 17 and before the game. And I mean, he's just a grizzled vet, um, but you know, doesn't have the same youthful energy that Darren Hinshaw kind of gives off. Uh, for, the, for, for the record, I consider myself a, a, a Chip Lindsay fan only because I believe, think he's a really nice guy. I think he, 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 he's not a bad oh, guy. Oh, he is. He is. He is. He's not a bad guy. It, it, it just it wasn't a good fit. Uh, Lonely Bumblebee uh, commenting on the broadcast of his very 90s vibe. Oh, absolutely. Uh, That's 90s ESPN, too, man. He's talking. Yeah, uh, somebody talking made a comment on that. Yeah. Somebody, I think there, yeah, somebody, Mike Friedman chiming in, kind of split, but I think I like the 90s vibe on the broadcast. So there are some people that liked it, the little hey, vibe. Hey, man, here. what's what's old is new. I mean, I'm, what, I've, what I've heard is, and I've kind of seen this, is the big, I've seen the Big 12 really try to go for, like, the young, hip crowd. This isn't the Big 12. This is Fox. Well, yeah, but the Fox does the big, has the Big 12. They have it, but, I mean, this is Fox altogether. They did it last week in week zero, too. So, I mean, this isn't just the Big 12 trying to be young. Hip. This is Fox trying to bring – This is the Fox thing, right? I mean, I saw the – I mean, they were doing that for Nebraska, Minnesota, which is definitely not hip and not any – I mean, nothing. Oh, there was nothing hip about that game. What, what a snoozer. Who ended up winning that? <laughs> uh, it, it's actually not over. Uh, it's 10-3 oh. Nebraska with um, – just under with about three and a half minutes to go and Minnesota's in the red zone. I mean, this game is a real, that's real your block. league. You follow drew. You like that big 10. Yeah. I like the big 10, but I don't like Nebraska. <laughs> I don't think they belong in the big 10 and they've been them Rutgers, Maryland, all trash since they joined the big 10. I mean, Nebraska had their one, the one year run when they were still using up their old players. But after that, everyone, they were exposed for who they are, which is a has been program. In wow. a place that doesn't really offer much of anything, Don't except really good fans. Don't let the volleyball program here say that. 
Oh, I, I'm not talking about the volleyball program. Uh, they've always been massive supporters of volleyball, and you saw something that I don't know if will ever be topped with the filling of their stadium for a volleyball match. Over 90,000 people. I mean, 90,003 to be exact. That is amazing. And, you know, from to get, you know, to kind of get on the, on, that other soapbox uh we need to support women's sports better we is just the american society and we don't um but to see that is is really cool it shows what we are capable of uh because we know you know look at college basketball women's is viewed as an inferior product because it's not as flashy it doesn't have the high flying dunks and so well you know what here's true men are built to be more athletic than women that's just science so you have to appreciate the sports for what they are. And I think we need to support them as well. You know, whatever that logo is on the front, it doesn't matter if it's a men's sport or women's sport. It needs our support as, as students, fans, alums, boosters. Uh, it, it, it shouldn't matter. So to see the Nebraska faithful do that for volleyball, for women's volleyball, wow. is just was not, was amazing, absolutely amazing. Again, if you tune into the ESPN Plus UCL broadcast, you would have heard our conversation about Nebraska volleyball. Cheap plug number two. Uh, <laughs> there you go. You still watch it online. And on still today. watch it as many times as you want for the next 10 months. Uh, Matt Jay commenting on the broadcast. What is up with Fox hardly doing any replays during the game? Aside from the first drive, they had plenty of time between plays to run a replay. Are you by? Uh... Uh, I mean, I mean, there was plenty of replays done, and, and a lot of times they had to cut back because they thought UCF was going to run faster than they did. I oh. think that may have been the guys in the in the uh, in the truck maybe getting a little uh, happy feet. Ooh, happy feet there. <laughs> uh, by the way, and Bryce, is this correct? You just sent me the announced crowd was over what forty four thousand. According to our, our friend of the show and your and your fellow host of Around the Kingdom, Trace Trilco, he said he, he he said that the announced attendance at the match was forty four thousand eighty eight people. We'll have to get Kyle to uh, Nick to uh, verify if that was accurate. I don't think it because there was a lot of chatter about the crowd early. I don't know but the TV there. I mean, now I did see something where some people had trouble getting into the stadium and. There was a log gym, and some people got in late. I don't know how accurate that was 20, 25 minutes later, though. I did see some chatter about that. I don't know how much that contributed. Uh, I don't know if you guys have any comments on the, the attendance. I, I know that well, was kind of an early chatter. I've always said use the end of the first quarter for UCF games to determine what the attendance is really like uh, because they're notorious – for getting in late for one reason and it may be a valid reason it may not be but they're but you know fans are notorious for getting into the stadium late and so by the end of the fir- third the first quarter they're all there or at least close enough where you can you can run with that uh you know the big the bigger criticism has been over the last year and change is them is the mass exodus at halftime in these lopsided games uh not quite as bad this time. Uh, obviously, by you know seven minutes left in the fourth quarter, and the, the game's you know over forty points, uh, I can see people leaving because this is Thursday. It is a school night. Uh, UCF on multiple years has done this, where they've decided to schedule Thursday night games before Labor Day. I hate it every single time, and I don't buy their excuse. Of, oh, we're helping the Labor Day holiday. No, you're ruining the Labor Day holiday by taking away the football game that makes the Labor Day holiday. Uh, but uh, you know, to have four, you know basically a packed house, I believe the max is forty-four two now in change. Uh, basically, have a setup against a bottom feeder MAC opponent uh, on a midweek game. That's not bad. That's really not bad. Well, I think what they would tell you is, I think in this particular year anyway, with them playing the Thursday night game, it gives them an extra day or two because they got to go to Boise State. Uh, eh, they, I mean, it's not like, like I read somewhere, somewhere where the bus, it. the team bus that grab that takes all the equipment and stuff, it's a thirty-six hour bus ride from like bus trip from like or truck trip, however they use it. From yeah, Orlando. but the players aren't the players, and they're not on that bus. 
I understand. So the I'm fact just, that the game's on Saturday versus you the know, game on Drew, Thursday. You know better than I do. Every coach believes that not they don't they don't they don't have enough time for prep. That every minute matters, and so if it means an extra day or two, and that I mean, that's all superstition at that point. I, the fact that this was televised. Be. Let me ask you this: the fact that it was televised nationally does that. Make you feel better because it was nationally televised. This game would no- normally, otherwise, this game would not have been broadcasted. I don't believe on linear television if it if it was on uh, Saturday, for example. It was, I don't uh, believe. Well, it depends on the year. Uh, I remember UCF had played Thursday. I remember it was a Thursday night game against uh, Akron, and they got relegated to streaming. Uh, you know, it, it's not always. Uh, it depends on what the rest of the schedule is. So you look at this week one schedule. I mean, there, there's a lot of dogs out there. I mean, there's terrible matchups. Uh, so there was really nothing else to compete against. You know, I mean, Florida, Utah was it. And so they got, obviously, you know, primetime ESPN. FS1, I view as a secondary network. It's basically the equivalent of ESPN2. Uh, because it's not Fox. It's the other station. Uh, so, you know, it's great that it was nationally broadcast, but as we know, uh, FS1 does not carry ratings compared to some of these other stations. They just uh, don't. FS1 does. FS1 will carry. We I will get a number. Oh, no, no. I mean, like, they don't. It's not that they don't give you the ratings. Is that. They oh, that they don't. Right, right. They're not a lot of people tune in. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's not CBS I will, Sports. <laughs> I will say this, though. I wonder if they benefit. A little bit, especially in the Orlando market and Tampa market, which has a lot of Gator, you know, college football fans, Gator. You know, I'm wondering with this whole debacle with Spectrum, for example, and and the the ES, and Disney, did some people, maybe casual people, because ESPN was that people were going to watch the Florida Utah game, maybe are a casual fan in the market. Oh, that's not available. I'm just going to stay, go back to the UCF game, stay with or find the UCF game, maybe. I I don't know. We'll see when I get the number. I don't think it's a big difference, but I do wonder if that play that will help the numbers a little. Bit. I mean, certainly can't hurt the number. I'll, right. I'll play that. But uh, the bigger question is how many videos of people destroying their TVs will you find out of the Florida area as a result of this? Of this I think they're. Uh, I think they would. Are they destroying that because of their offense with Graham Mertz at quarterback? But that's well. I mean, issue. we all knew this was coming. I mean, this is you know, th- th- this was. You know, well on its way, and I think Florida fans may have been in a little bit of denial, which, by the way, is a final 24-11. Uh, well, number 14, Utah, does hold serve at home against Florida, get revenge for last year. And, by the way, that that slobber knocker of a game, Minnesota-Nebraska is now 10-all oh. uh, with two and a half minutes to go. I mean, boy, whew. Oh, man, I don't know if I can handle this. <laughs> Uh, we got comments about the people having trouble getting in. Chris Gannon, who uh, was at the game, it took an hour to get into parking garage C after I got on campus. Oh, uh, oh. Now, normally oh. they were pretty smooth on that stuff in prior years. So I'm very curious at what has changed to make it such a cluster. I uh, I, I have a I, – I might have an idea. And I don't know if they've changed this, but as someone who has had to park on UC at UCF for the past few weeks going to class, they uh, – for some reason, I – don't know why, but but you but you could not turn left into the parking lot anymore. Right, so, I did notice that. Yeah, you, you, what, I don't know you can't turn left. They're, they're basically what they're doing is they're funneling they're funneling cars into the parking lot like one like one way or another. I I think it's I think they just eliminated one way to get in there and make sure I think in some ways it makes it less chaotic, but it makes it like much longer and much more of a slog. I mean you thought I mean it you, you think it's a nightmare when you have all these college students trying to go to class. I had to go for I had a doctor's appointment really early in the morning and I had to go to class <laughs> afterwards. I thought I was going to make it to class. I ended up spending a, the almost exactly the same amount of time on campus in my car that it took me to get from the doctor's office in Altamont Springs to campus in my car. That is how bad the traffic was on campus. And, it, wow. and, and that's for classes. Imagine what it's like for a football game like this. How so- dare you? Well, let, let's bring in a man who actually went to the game. Uh, we'll ask him about how his traveling ex- uh, experience went. Our very own Kyle Nash from the stadium there at the Spectrum. Uh, 
joining us there. So, are you are allowed you to say Spectrum? No, I, I, I got Spectrum in my head. I, Bounce House. It's formerly Spectrum. Thank goodness it's not Spectrum. Uh, Otherwise, anymore. they wouldn't have. They, they would have pulled the, the whole game off. The, the game stadium. would have been stopped after the kickoff. Like, yeah, absolutely. All right, Kyle, you did you have any trouble getting into the stadium? I mean, I don't have a ambulance that travels quite as far as Altamont Springs, but you know, <laughs> I, um, I I actually made sure I got on campus early to avoid those problems. This is what this is what you know proactive people do. What can I say? <laughs> wow! All right, we're starting with shots fired. Right the shots fired. <laughs> Um, fair enough, Bryson. I, I'm, still, I, I, I'm a little bitter about the, 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 the picture that, that Bryson said, trying to tell me if I had any drip for the game as it's raining. Anyways. All right. Uh, speaking of drip, what did you think of UCF drip performance today, football? What, give me your thoughts here uh, overall. Well, uh, and listen, this is a tougher game to uh, evaluate. I know that there are the negative Nancys and the panic artists out there. That exists, I'm sure. Um, you know, and know that Drew, I don't mean you necessarily take it easy, but um, I was not know, one I, of them. I, I know exactly. I'm saying I'm trying to keep that off of you. I know when I throw that out there, that people will think I mean you this time. I don't. It's that simple. But <laughs> there was a lot I did like for all gentlemen get very excited about this defensive tackle group. Listen, I know it's a lot more fun to talk a quarterback and we'll talk plenty about John Rice Plumley later, I'm sure. But the big dudes in the middle and every part of the depth had a fantastic game. I get it. It's only Kent State. But, hey, listen, Kent State also had uh, a starting defensive tackle that was 255 pounds, and we saw the interior linemen struggle at times on offense. Defensively, we saw domination. There's even a particular uh, play where Josh Salisgard from the defensive end spot cracked down, and uh, Lee Hunter runs down, hunts down the quarterback to make the play. That's what you want to see from your defensive tackles. You want to see mobility and intimidation. They were causing most of the hurries. Um, I believe uh, Lee Hunter led the team in tackles. You'll correct me if I'm wrong there, Drew, if I am. Um, but, yeah, just a lot of positive play from the beef in the middle on defense. And other than the two interceptions, which I know Drew and I are going to talk about quite a bit, and you will hear at least a little about on the night class uh, up on the black and gold banneret after this when it drops later tonight. But – Bing. There's just a lot to be positive. Bing. Thank you, Elo. But with all that in mind, there's just, there's a lot of positive there. Um, I love Xavier Townsend. What a what a performance! A guy this time last year who was learning to play receiver. Who, Kobe? Who? No. And, and I joke about Kobe Hudson and Javon Baker. They're obviously going to have big days on other days. But it's great to see Townsend come up. Uh, uh, you know, as my fellow uh, blocker brethren. Drew will have noticed Alec Haller all over the fleet field. Sure, the fans will see the touchdown. But any big play for all intents and purposes that took place tonight involved the block by one Alec Haller. That was a thing I thoroughly enjoyed. There was a lot of positive to take away from this game tonight. Yeah, you actually me, what did I, oh let me let me before we jump in on questions, Drew, your your comments to Kyle. What did Gus Malzahn have to say after the game? Uh many people could check the post game on ESPN plus. So uh, what what was the kind of the mood in the post game there? What Gus had to say, and shortly you'll be able to check it on the Black and Gold Banner at YouTube page. By the way, Eric uh, Lopez. Bing! This but is true. With all that in mind, with all that in mind, um, yeah, he said what you would have expected from the standpoint of a lot of good, a lot of bad. You know, there were some mistakes, obviously, but I feel like this was being treated like a preseason game almost. You know, from an NFL perspective, or right? a scrimmage, I, maybe. Oh, what a scrimmage, as you're so fond of saying. Thank you, Eric. Not Lopez. a scrimmage. Let... Preseason I... is not a scrimmage. There is a difference. <laughs> there is a difference, but he, he likes using scrimmage for college games, Drew. Let, just roll with it. He, he should he, say but... an exhibition. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't want this to be an inhibition on our performance tonight, Drew. But what I'll tell you. <laughs> oh, that's, uh, what that's long out the window. I mean, you know, come on. Yeah. You know, little, anyway, little Fisher's but, uh, Island lemonade here. <laughs> yeah. But with, uh, hey, maybe he's enjoying not writing this week. Who would have thunk it? Uh, no, but with all that in mind, guys, uh, Coach Melzon, you know, had a lot he liked. I think his um, addressing of the mistakes makes you feel like it's things that are correctable. I kind of agree with that. You know, even John Rice Plumley himself said that he got greedy. You know, this. These, I think these are mistakes that will go away. I don't think he lets these sorts of plays rip 
um, like he did uh, like he did tonight. I don't think he would do that against Boise State on the blue field on the road, right? So there's a lot of risks that they took. It's kind of like driving a rental car in that way. You do stuff with that car that you wouldn't with your own, that kind of thing. I was thinking more like, you know, like treating the hotel room poorly you know <laughs> hey both both are wonderful travel analogies for the next game upcoming on the road i like what you're doing there with me drew was there uh say? kyle any any thought or comments any injuries uh talked about i know some people were commenting earlier about jason johnson didn't they didn't see him much in the second half uh was there any talk about any injuries of note or, 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 or yeah from or, from where i sat um a, a lot of uh, a lot of talk of people being healthy nothing really came out uh, in the post game i'm sure we'll hear more about whatever comes out of friday as they have the session with um darren hinshaw and uh and addison williams uh tomorrow afternoon for that availability i'm sure any of that would come out then um if not monday uh, but at this point, listen, I, I think Drew and I both mentioned it, and maybe other people did in the roundtable that dropped before the game on blackandgoldbanneret.com, that the biggest important thing in this game is not to suffer any major injuries. Now, John Rice Plumley may not have gotten that memo with some of the plays he executed running the football. Um, impressive as they were, uh, I, I believe Gus Malzahn's precise quote was, there were a couple of times I was about to go out there and tackle him, so he'd stop running like that. Um, so, you know, there were concerns and even John Rice on the mic afterwards said, he's got to address that. He's got to learn to eat some plays, got to learn to tuck and, you know, maybe live to fight another day. Um, certainly based on what happened last year, you want to hear him capitulating that living to fight another day is a big deal. So, you know, Kyle, it makes me think of major league. Nice cash. Don't ever bleep and do it again. That's, that's a fine analogy, even though it is a non sequitur of which you are King, sir. Yes. But anyway, oh, I, I, I wear that badge with honor and pride. Kyle, I have a question for you because you mentioned Darren Hinshaw a second ago. Did Gus have anything to say about uh, the quality of Darren Hinshaw's play call in the day? I'm just cur curious about Gus's thoughts on how Darren did with that. Um, I, I don't think that question came up, but I think the evaluation would be that a lot of it was smart and went pretty well, right? I, when you have, it's hard to judge play calling when you are clearly the more talented team overall. Uh, I, there were some things that I enjoyed from my my purview. There were more efforts to pass, I felt like. You did see more touch in John Rice Plumley's uh, passes. Generally speaking, they went they were supposed to, except for the two interceptions, which, as Drew probably said on Twitter, if I know him, and I hope he did, you got to throw those balls on the outside shoulder by the sideline, John Rice. That will come up, uh, by the way, in the night class. I, I can guarantee you More that. than once tonight already. And you should have. It's, I mean, you know, if, if, if we... Former fat guys are pointing it out. A quarterback should bloody well know it. That's just my opinion. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> but, but I mean, Drew has said, and I said, overall, though, I think there was a lot of positive on Jeremy. I thought his mechanics were better. Uh, yes. He was going through his progressions. There were improvements from last year, which is a credit to Darren Hinshaw. I right. think the decisions are what they are. I agree with that. I, I agree with you it's about some of the running. But he's improved. Well, and, and touching on the decision thing, and I mentioned this a bit in passing, but but I feel like this is worth bringing it up again here. I think there's some things that he lip, let rip kind of just because he could. You know, um, eh, we'll give this a shot, you know. And, and, you know, again, it's not that it was necessarily a bad choice. It was a bad ball. And, and you know, I, I'll put it this way. I think it's more likely – at the podium, if I'm coaching John Rice Plumley, that I'm going to call it a bad decision rather than a bad pass, because I think that might actually go after his confidence, having worked so hard and come so far with having better touches on his passes. And, and listen, the times he hit Xavier Townsend, who was, again, phenomenal tonight, um, were, were good passes uh, overall. I, I know that uh, Townsend had to go up and get the one for the touchdown, but that's fine. There was a, um, a, a couple of outlet passes where he was throwing to a valve one where he was in his own end zone outside to uh johnny richardson where only he could get to it and not only did he get out of trouble from getting sacked in the end zone you got a significant gain to get out of your own territory after that too this is the kind of stuff that we wanted to see um from john rice Plumley, and not just the occasional cross field pass pulled out of the rear end to isaiah bowser to save the day Let's not forget R.J. Harvey, by the way, because, I mean, I, I, I know we've mentioned a lot of players over the course of this hour, but I don't think we've gotten to, met, gotten, gotten to name drop R.J. yet because he's really made some impressive plays as well tonight. 
Hey, listen, man. By now, uh, Bryce, and I'll put it this way, we make jokes about how much older we all are than you, but you've been around long enough or as long as the tradition that is running backs at UCF, and R.J. Harvey's just continuing it. Yeah, absolutely. Tonight, uh, they had a program record, I believe it's 8.6 yards per carry uh, on the evening. Program record tonight. The last one was 8.3. I haven't confirmed when or who it was yet. I'm sure some historian may pull it out of the sky here sooner or later, but that's what I have for you uh, so far. So, yeah, that's just part of the electric performance, uh, Bryson. But I would add this, too, that Johnny Richardson had a lot more touches th tonight than I did he uh, throughout the season. If anybody else is wondering – about Darren Hinshaw's fingerprints, I think it's on that as well. Hey, uh, real quick, three seconds to go. Minnesota wins on a last-second field goal. Wow. Man. Oh, well, they can't blame Scott Frost over there. Anymore, At least they made it to double figures. There you go. Uh, this is Night Chef. We're recapping UCF's 56-6 to win over Kent State. I'm Eric Lopez, Andrew Glutkoff, Bryson Turner, Kyle Nash is at the stadium. Joining us now back. After he just walked from the stadium, he, he was, was in, in the, the stands. stands. Nick Priscelli, turn me down, turn me down, down, turn me down, Nick. down Nick. What's going on, guys? <laughs> <laughs> the old sports <laughs> talk radio, radio rule. Oh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm moving you out until you – the old rule in sports talk radio, Kyle and Drew, you know this. When you're listening to the show, all right, and I bring you on as a caller in, in radio, or in this case, a guest. Get the radio. Gotta, yes. Oh, boy. Unbelievable. Kids these maybe, days. Maybe he just wanted to hang up and listen. I, <laughs> <laughs> That's probably true. All right. Let's see. All right. Are we, do you want to try this again, Nick? Do you want to try it here? Let's see. All right. We got it. You got me muted there? Nope. I can nope, hear nope. you now. All right. All right. Nope. nope. Still hear me. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I love um, this. What's the head what, 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 I love that. Right. <laughs> okay. I don't know. That, all right. Um, the good news about all this, folks. Look at Kyle's haircut, by the way. Can we? Can you comment, Drew? Yeah, on that's Kyle's? always Kyle's hair. I mean, that's Kyle. <laughs> wow. Wow. He was a young college student. It hasn't changed. What can I say except you're welcome? <laughs> <laughs> He's got that Greek thing going. Oh, um, wow. Kyle, you mentioned Johnny Richardson a second ago. I mentioned this, this stat earlier. The fa the fact that the only running back that did not score tonight, Johnny Richardson ended up being the leading rusher tonight. Oh, yeah. Well, it's because he was using so many facets of the game. And remember, he did score, except for some goofball hold that made the whole play happen. And, and I know that with the spot of where it was is pretty essential to the run. I'm pretty sure Richardson would have uh, found a way to get past that guy. Maybe he wouldn't have taken it to the house. I, I don't know. But listen, talking about running backs getting into the end zone, fellas, what do you all think of the five cat? I am stoked to see what Jordan McDonald's doing. The reason why I call it the five cat is because they were doing it with Isaiah Bowser last year, who was wearing number five. And Drew and, Drew and I were talking about this during the game uh, uh, in DMs um, about them getting basically a bigger, stronger version of what's going on there. I, I mean, I don't know if we're going back to, to even muster Tristan Hill running the goal line package with number five as well. I don't know if we're trying to do that, but, um, you know, him coming out, doing the five cat, I thought it had wonderful success. And, and who knows, if they put in a package where he throws the football, people will lose their minds. So, so important question, Kyle, because uh, Bryce and I are in massive disagreement here and, and war started as a result. Is it, do you support the old McDonald had a farm side or do do you support the wrecking ball um i'm gonna have to come in like a wrecking ball on that one um because i'm trying to break loose from the corporate hold that is the big mac on america and uh... <laughs> and the funny you know it's funny it, it is so funny to me that you two are the ones that are going for the more modern reference in miley cyrus's wrecking ball ball i'm oh, yeah. going with the I old, guess the old right. okay yeah. boomer <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, comment coming in here. I think I like Bryson's name better. The old McDonald chicken nugget and honey mustard and ranch package or something that was about as long. What about Szechuan sauce? Uh-oh, we don't want to start riots, Drew. Hold no. on. All right, let, let me bring in Nick. Let's try. He's on two hours of sleep somehow. He woke up at 5 a.m. and he walked 
three miles from the stadium to get back to your place. We got a lot of questions for Nick, but let me see if this. Let's see if we figure that out, Hurt. All right. How are you, you doing, good? Nick? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm. I'm alive. Yes. Hey. <laughs> and you don't hear me. That's awesome. Uh, that's fantastic. Which yeah, we Nick have to do you... them once. That's trouble enough. Yeah. Exactly. I concur on that. Uh, you just heard the big debate there between Bryson and Drew. Where, where do you fall under there? Uh, I'm gonna go with re- wrecking ball. I guess. I don't, I don't know. Ah. Yeah, I'll go with Kyle. All right, let let me get let's get Kyle out because he's got a right, and uh, this is not the only football game he's got to cover this week. So yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, three, like, you got three hundred <laughs> you got three hundred football games this week. I think to cover. Um, deep secondary. Some people were concerned about the secondary. Uh, your quick thoughts on that? No, and if there's a place to be concerned, I believe it's that as well. But I think part of it, the adjustment in question is, listen, give Kent State's quarterback a little bit of credit. When he had time, he could put the ball in a spot. I was quite impressed um, with throws he had in the game. Um, I think they're getting used to playing a little less of that bend, don't break, we've come to know and love or loathe, depending on what part of the debate you're on, from uh, Travis Williams last year. I think Addison Williams, you saw a lot more head-up coverage. You saw them meeting people at the line. And what I'm seeing is is a lot more of a breakfast secondary, right? They're in there for the first meal of the day. As, they're, as, as the receiver's coming out, they're meeting guys early, but getting to the supper part of the route later down the field is where they're struggling. And I think they're relying a lot on the defensive line to prevent those problems. But did they have enough sacks this evening? A lot of the critics would tell you no. So if there's a place to be concerned, you might hear about that coming up in night class this evening. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, the hobbits disagree. They need second breakfast, too. Well, and there was plenty of that coverage from what you saw in the linebackers. I would argue Lee Hunter had second breakfast when he ran out to the outside in the play I was talking about earlier and in, in a way that only Pippen and Mary would be happy about. Take that, nerd. <laughs> Nerd. Uh, question for you, Kyle. A question for you from the uh, people here, as well as Nick. I'm going to get Nick because Nick was in the stands. They announced 44,000 was the attendance. Is that exaggerated, accurate? What What was the attendance like, gentlemen? Starting with you, Kyle. Uh, I think it's spot on with what it started with, but I don't think we finished with that. Nick, you were in the stands. Yeah, I would say that's pretty accurate. You know, I think there was some areas that were kind of blocked off. I heard from some of my fr- friends that apparently some of the students started getting a little rowdy and they closed the gates no. down. No, oh, wait, students getting rowdy? No way. <laughs> say it so, ain't so. But uh, I would guess, yeah, that's probably an accurate attendance. <laughs> it looked pretty good on TV when they when they panned out. So. Oh yeah. Oh no, it was still like packed. I, it, the energy in that stadium was amazing. Like that was one of my favorite games that I went to. But yeah, like Kyle said, you know uh, that little bit that comes in with the energy. Coach Malzahn commented on the concerns surrounding what the crowd would be with the weather being what it is, it being on a Thursday. And according to Coach Malzahn, uh, the crowd delivered. So yeah, uh, backing Nick on that, uh, Coach saw it. I think there was enough energy certainly uh, for an opening. Uh, Big 12 appearance, such as they were in that, you know, the the, the, the Roman numerals were painted and stitched in the proper places. Uh, but, yeah, I think that that presence was felt tonight. Now we can't he, wait to see how it is when they really open the Big 12 against Baylor later in September. Real Big 12 conference game. People asking, too, about the lights. Remember the whole big thing about new lights at the stadium? Did you guys oh, notice cool. anything different there, uh, Kyle and, and Nick, starting with you, Kyle? Well, actually, Nick, you're the one in the stands. Why don't you talk about that a little bit, that part yeah. a little bit? So you guys know that tradition that we started the whole lights up, lights down thing. They cut the lights yeah. off so you know it could show, and then they're getting ready to go back to play, and they can't get one of the lights on, so the game got, got delayed. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, wow. I guess I mean, what, what's old is new, huh? Yeah. It seriously. wasn't Ravens. It wasn't Ravens 49ers Super Bowl delay bad, but yeah, they had to tinker with it for a bit. Yeah, like you can still clearly see everything, but like you know, one of the lights were out. So it, yeah, they're LEDs. Um, that's why the the others popped on like so quick. They're supposed to pop right on. So the, someone failed here. You know, we'll uh, blame the we'll blame the rain. Kyle, did you miss Drew in the in the press box? Um, it was pretty quiet. So I guess. I <laughs> well, it's because no. the personality went from here to down here. Now <laughs> Kyle, Kyle is the rest of this, by the way. I, I, you know, I appreciate that. No, uh, um, yeah, I, I, it was it was different not having you, buddy. But I, I liked having you uh, at a fingertips pace to still kind of 
you know, bounce off with you in the DM. But it wasn't it wasn't the same having not having you up there, buddy. I'll give you that much credit for sure, man. I didn't. This it. was arguably one of the weirdest games for me. <laughs> Uh, first time in years, I didn't sit with a computer in front of me. I didn't type anything on the computer regarding the game. I'm just sitting on the phone, chatting with the guys, and watching it with with my wife. Or she she lasted till about midway the fourth quarter, and then she she went to bed. It's like the game's over. Don't you can go to bed. Uh, was Sorry, this is this is more ambulance after Bryson talking about. Having it, no, the, the, the bigger question is: Did Drew miss out on a good media spread or no? Is it Mel? Dude, that is not proper to throw out here. It's probably Mellow Mushroom again. Uh, it was, but uh, which well, really, it was. Oh, I didn't. Okay, it's that makes that sense. For the last few years, it's, it's really been It's been you know, you know salad, pizza, wings, and stuff. There's some cooking. That's a good time. I like it. It's I just wish I was. I've never had a problem with that. I, uh, I just delicious. wish I could eat all of it. But I can't. Yeah, I know. Get uh, us getting old. We can't eat the same stuff like we used to. It's uh, not that old. <laughs> now, what, is, how packed was the box? You know, we're how big. Folks, oh, oh yeah, right yeah, now. absolutely. And 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 uh, you know, we, we talk about expanding facilities and things like that. We know that that should probably be on the list. It was definitely packed uh, tonight. Um, the excitement was there. You know, all the usual suspects and a few more in the building. Um, yeah, it was definitely it was definitely an affair, despite being a Thursday night game. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you know, for those who've never been up there, which is most people, uh, it's it's not very big. Uh, it's definitely, you know, when, when you have a lot of people, you you cr- you, you get close uh, when oh, you're yeah. sitting at that, especially in the front row. Uh, they have a, a basically the, the front row is basically one big long, you know, built-in table, and they just have chairs. Uh, so I mean, when there's a lot of people, you get very you you kind of scrunch in there, uh, but it's it's really not a you know, it was built for a Conference USA program. So, I mean, the, the demands have obviously changed over the years. There's a lot of renovations that uh, certainly can be used across UCF uh, campus very uh, much there as well. All right, Kyle, we're going to let you go. We, I know you're busy, literally. Like, you got 300 football games to cover, 300 articles to write. One of them being on Black and Gold Banner Red. So tell the audience about what you got working on. Absolutely. Listen, I don't ever hope to replace the knee-jerk reaction because I don't think I can. But... I am willing to open up night class on the black and gold banner it.com to walk through what observations I have, what we might have learned and what we might be able to think about going in to the upcoming game against Boise next weekend. Um, so look for that here uh, sooner or later, as soon as I can push it out there too. Of course, all the other video action you come to know uh, and love here shortly up on the YouTube page, all that coming out soon. Uh, but until next time, gentlemen, class dismissed. Oh, he was ready. He was ready for that. No, that's, oh, I, mean, that's, I missed that. I have yeah. missed that over the. It's been a while. It's been a while. Everyone has, everyone has, has you know their line. That's one of his. So Kyle, you know, Kyle and I have been talking about you know him, him writing his article, and, and he asked me about you know he goes, what about that? You know, sorry, it's not my best. What's the story behind that? So I had to give him the backstory of it. How uh, there was a hack job done by the Georgia Tech writer ahead of the 2020 game where he claimed he did a Q&A with us, but he, he really just hacked it up. And at the end of it, he goes, you know, sorry, I tried my best. Well, he was since eventually edited it out because I mocked mocked it after that. And after that first game, sorry, it's not my best, but, you know, I'll do better next time. Uh, I kept that for the season. And then starting in 2021, I changed it every game. And one time I didn't do it, and a friend of mine's like, dude, you left it out. <laughs> And I actually did was was like, yeah, I'll just drop it. And someone actually called me out on it. So, so it's, you know, for me, it's kind of like my Rodney Dangerfield moment. I get no respect, you know, sorry, it's not my best, but insert excuse here. So, you know, everyone's got their, their line, their shtick and, and Kyle's always been a class dismissed kind of guy. Yeah. Big Bryson Turner uh, fan club for breaking out here. Luca body shout out to Bryson, Willie Wright. See you Bryson. Yes, sir, Bryson. Brian Levin. <laughs> you got Bryson. groupies, man. You He's got, got groupies all of a sudden. They got oh, all fired yeah, up when he was got an entourage. Uh, right, please, man. Oh. Hey, shout out to the boy, to the boys from the DeVos program. You know that, hey. that that's that, that's what you get when you get into a grad school cohort. Thanks, guys. Wow, yeah, I'll, I'll you guarantee you, any grad school program I go to wouldn't give two craps of what I do here. <laughs> well, Nick, I want to let me let's talk.
talk to Nick here a little bit. The poor man, he's first 5 a.m. wake up call. What? Why? Wait, why a 5 a.m. wake up call on a game day? What? Why? First, I had to get my run and wait session in. Guys, see, at correct. least I have a good excuse. I have to get up early because my daughter has to go to school, but you wait in the run, man. You are just something else. All right. Well, Nick, I'm curious because you have a great, I'm glad because you got to go to the game. You were in the stance. So I want to give. Uh, give us you, your perspective from the stands perspective, uh, the environment, uh, what was the vibe like, and then obviously what your thoughts was, what, what you saw. It was really just a party atmosphere. Like for me personally, it's my third year, so it was kind of more like, you know, a little bit of a nostalgic feeling like we're back. Seeing the Big 12 logo, that was awesome. If, you know, like for me, that was really my, we finally made it moment after, you know, all this hype, we're finally here. But, and, but yeah, the entire stadium, that was an awesome experience to be able to go down in, you know, uh, like, you know, like you guys said, we were worried about what weather scaring people off. They didn't care about weather during the tailgating lightning was coming down. You know, I could hear Jeff on the loudspeaker saying, please, uh, take shelter. Yeah. But it's Jeff sharing talking. No one listens to him. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah, that's what I'm saying. No one cares. We were just like, nah, we're going to stay here and party. So we were partying in the rain. It was awesome. (laughs) Stands are wet. We don't care. We're jumping up and down. We're getting splashed. I'm covered in so much rainwater. I don't know if it shows, but it it was awesome to see. And I will say though, I probably drove my friends nuts because you know they were just trying to enjoy the game. And then me, I'm watching it a little more analytical, being like, I don't know if he should make that throw. Don't do that. This is the play call. You know, I'm probably the worst person to watch sports with. <laughs> You're my kind of guy to watch sports with. Yeah, I know. Even I'm doing like. Uh, I was sitting with with my wife, and and I make him, you know, or the call when it was ineligible man downfield by by Kent State. I actually go and I'm pointing to the team. I walk up to the TV, I start pointing like, yeah, this guy over here, he went too far downfield during this. I start doing this in the middle of the game. You know what's funny is I kind of did that. I because. You know, everyone else is freaking out. They're like, oh, no, he's going to get a touchdown. And I'm, like, trying to shout at people. I'm like, no, there's a flag. We're fine. It's it's fine. Ignore this. We're fine. And everyone's just looking at me like I'm strange. Well, I mean, yeah. They're, they're not paying attention to that stuff. I know. I, just... I don't know if you've heard, you know, you probably heard stories of from, from the Texas game in 2007. After they score the, the first touchdown, uh, there's a lightning delay. And, you know, PA at the time was Eric Kohler. He's like, you know, get down and, you know, go seek shelter. And nobody's, like the whole state, nobody's moving. They're, they were so shamed. Uh, absolutely insane. And, of course, it was hot and there was no water felt. Yeah, and, and my friend Lisa, you know, didn't even make it to the game. She she, she unofficially died at the game and, and, and came back the next week when there was water fountains. Uh, you know, she, uh, you know, there were, it, obviously uh, that was the butt of many jokes for many years. Uh, but, man, you, you get these UCF fans jacked enough, you know, Lightning will not scare them off. You cannot harm me. I have night power. <laughs> Yeah, literally, we were all just like, you know what? We just got through a hurricane. We we don't care. We're not leaving. <laughs> hey, man, I, I I lived through the Marshall Monsoon. Even with a poncho, it didn't matter. Uh- <laughs> I want to ask you, because there were some people talking about how they had trouble getting in uh, a kickoff. And some people were logged. It was a log jam. I don't know if you got in super early or not. Well, did you sense anything unusual? Bryson was very critical before he went on. <laughs> Uh, Bryce, you want to recap to Nick the criti- uh, how yeah. you're critical about how the setup Nick, on the parking? Nick, like, he was full of this rage. Rage. Rage, Bryce. To be fair, the thing made me late to my – the thing made me – the whole situation made me late to my grad, my grad school class. Since anytime Ooh. you miss stuff in grad school class, you are really worried about the stuff you're going to need to catch up on. Anyway, so uh, – Bryson things- turns into the Incredible Hulk. You know, you make him I angry. Need to, I need to rewatch this. I, what does Bryson look like when he's mad? I don't think I've ever seen that. <laughs> I don't call it mad. I call it passionate. Okay. I want to see like full on rage mode from Bryson. I, I need I to see that. I need to see that. I'm when he there. snaps. I it's really my favorite part of the show, honestly, Nick. It's worth replay on the replay. I'm, I'm rewatching it. Or you series. can listen on the podcast feed when it gets posted on all your favorite, wherever you listen to the uh, Can we find podcast. a way, Eric, Eric um, to, to find something that really pisses Bryson off? And every show have a segment of what pisses Bryson off and just needle it. 
<laughs> Trust me, me and Bryson right. were very upset after the UCF Georgia women's soccer game, but that's all their story. Oh my God. Yeah, let's talk about the UCF Penn State game. <laughs> but uh, no, go ahead, Bryson. Tell quick yeah, Bryson, your sorry, thoughts on the, explain. on the parking, you know, because there were some people saying they had trouble getting into the stadium. There were some traffic issues. Supposedly. You think there's some theories to it? And then I want to hear what Nick thinks about that. So over the course, Nick, of the last two weeks of parking on campus, a uh, parking on campus, they, the UCF transportation, whoever is in charge of that, placed traffic cones on the left turn lanes into parking garages to uh, to prevent people from doing that. I have seen that. Yeah. Yes, and was that still there during for game day? Was that were those still there? Uh, I think uh, I didn't really. I got a, I just got a lift with my buddy and then I got dropped off so parking wasn't really a problem but it was there this morning when I was on my run on campus so I would assume it was still there during game time. Yeah. That that's what I thought cuz those so yeah, if people had parking situations going on, probably had something to do with that and how UCF was ch changing that. Maybe it was just to make parking less chaotic, but in the yeah, process yeah. of making it less chaotic, it it became a much longer process so it's really kind of a pick your poison so right. so by making it less chaotic they made it more chaotic, more chaotic yep yep uh, well more organ it's organized chaos no i live in organized chaos that doesn't sound organized at all <laughs> it's not well i think we all can agree they better figure it out because i mean it's one thing for this game or even villanova in a couple weeks but when you get to big 12 games like baylor's the sellout yeah you can't you can't, you can't you can't yeah, you know, that reminds me of back uh, when you know, UCF traveled to FAU for their first matchup down there, and they were so unprepared. They had no idea what they were in for with the sellout stadium and everything. They ran out of you know supplies. Uh, the the ushers were understaffed. I mean, it was just one mess. That parking was absolutely terrible. I was, you know, maybe they thought they weren't going to have that many people, but I mean, at this point, just plan for a sellout. Just make it easier. You know, spend a little extra resources, you know, more rent to cops and stuff, and just just plan for, you know, to have 45,000 people there. You know, it, it's just easier that way. I agree. Uh, what stood out? Uh, Nick, give me a, your standout players from the, the from the stands there. Who are people the most excited about there around you and you saw? Um, this isn't the standout, although I did like what he, what he did when he came into the game. Uh, Timmy McClain, my – but he was really excited to see him. And to his credit, he did do well in the when he came on from the bench. But I would say that the – I mean, it's the obvious one, but John Rice Plumley, like he really did leave that, lead that offense. You know, I did get frustrated with at times the fumble and the first interception. But looking back, I think I might have been a little nitpicky with that. And I'm pretty sure Kyle said it earlier when he's just like, those are things he can probably uh, – Stopped it. He'll learn to quit doing as the season goes on. So, but it's hard for me to pick a standout on defense, but I just love what the entire unit itself did. I mean, they kept him from scoring in a, any touchdowns. Like, in our score predictions, didn't we all think that they were going to score at least one touchdown? I predicted 56 14. Yeah, I think I had like 13, and that was my prediction. Uh, can't, oh, uh, you guys gave him too much, all Kent State too much credit, or didn't give UCF I, defense enough credit. I well, would say that I erred on the side that I thought the game was going to be have a lot muggier conditions than it ended up being. Well, they turned out to be fine, right, Nick? I mean, right? I mean, it, from that standpoint, it turned out to be great. Honestly, it was pretty cool out. It was all, honestly, it was a good day. Honestly, nothing. How did Jeff sound on the PA? Like Jeff? He sounded, yeah, he sounded good. Good. I don't know. Well, Nick had a unique perspective because you've been a spotter for him doing PA. Now you got to – was this your first UCF football game you've been – home game? No, I've been to tons. But this is the first time that, like, I knew who that actually was, like, talking okay. to everyone from the PA. So, like, <laughs> all my uh, – Fair enough. Fair fast. Fair. Some of my buddies – I knew who that yeah. was. <laughs> I was joking to some of my buddies. I'm like, hey, I have the PA guy's number. Should I text him and see if I can get him to say something? He won't do it. I know he won't, but hey, hopefully my... you're getting good feedback on the PA guy. They liked him. Uh, they like Jeff, right? We got Pod good. Yeah, I didn't. I mean, no one was getting upset with him. Which remember, Eric, awesome. recency, recency bias. There's enough people who've gone away from the old guy that don't remember him quite as well. So you know, the new guys kind of become the guy. Right. Yeah. For I mean, 
for me, he's been the only guy I've ever known. Like, so I don't I – you know, because he was there for the first year. The, yeah, yeah, Eric Kohler, the previous guy, did it for 20 years. Yeah, uh, which is I believe, I believe 2001, which was my first season, was his first season. So, I mean, he was a, a standard there. Uh, and, and Jeff picked up things along the way from him. But I, I think it's safe to say that that the student, by large, the student body now has never heard Eric Kohler do a, a UCF. A oh, 100%. Season. Yeah, that is so true. And and I think that that helps. Yeah. Hey, I got to ask this. Did Maybe I'm remembering it wrong, but wasn't one of the things that they were upgrading the stadium for over the summer, wasn't one of them supposed to be better Wi-Fi? Yeah, they claimed because of the weather it was um, having some issues. Uh, yes. That's their way of saying, yeah, we're, we're really not good at what we do. It did not work. It was and, terrible. Um, we're just using a lame excuse to try to cover up for it because like um, the second I walk out of that stadium, that's when my Twitter DMs blow up. And like yeah. I see Eric's message and I'm like, and they're like, we're going live at 1030. I'm like, I still got three miles to walk. Yeah, like, that that's a case of that so bounce house. Yeah, honestly. You know, peace, love, and no Wi-Fi. I personally like where Wi-Fi goes to die better. I, I wow. have used that comment before. <laughs> Well, let, let me ask you that because uh, Nick brought up the fact that we I started at 1030, which was actually earlier than I expected. Uh, Drew, what did you think? One of the rule changes this year was the running clock. They don't stop the clock after a first down anymore. Did you get did you get a set? Do you think that made a big difference? Little difference? No difference? Uh, did you know and that? It's not a big difference. Uh, you know, part of the problem is they they add more commercials and offset it. So as a result, yeah. It was three hours and 20 minutes this time instead of three hours and 35, three hours and 40 minutes. So you're not talking about a real big change here. You know, they, they were able to offset one savings for to spend on something else. And and, and that became a little bit of a money grab. But, you know, I, I, you know UCF is not really adversely affected on this because of um, their style. But other teams, it would impact. And, uh, you know, seeing it in practice, it's like, whatever. Um, you know, I don't think it really did any, really any good. Uh, if they were going to at least keep the commercials the same they were and actually make it closer to a three-hour game, much like an NFL game, okay, now we're going somewhere. But three hours and 20 minutes, nah, you're still, you know, three and a half is a typical college game, so you're still too close to it. Yeah, plus when you're dropping, like, over 50 points and forcing tons of three and outs, you know, doesn't matter if the clock's running or not. It's going to be a long game. All I got to say is thank God we're not on CBS Sports because those games will still run you four hours. Uh, Drew means CBS Sports Network. Yeah. Uh, he yeah. would be glad to be on CBS regular sports. Well, that's CBS. I'm talking about CBS Sports, you know, the, the, the channel. Well, isn't it really good that we're not – and I don't know the full details of this because, like I said, I didn't get the information until I left the stadium. But isn't it better that we weren't on ESPN because then they just <laughs> got to Florida or something? Yes, yes, it is great. That I was saying great. exactly that about an hour ago. <laughs> yeah, like if I try to load up the ESPN app, which is logged in between my ESPN Plus and the Spectrum app, I can't pull up ESPN. I can't okay. watch it. I have to pull up my sister's Direct TV stream to be able to watch ESPN. Um, but <laughs> not everyone has all those options, and I feel bad for them because this is all about money. To be fair, though, it sounds like we're the losers. We, you know, we the common folk are the losers here. Yeah. To be fair, though, it sounds like Florida didn't do too good tonight. So maybe. Well, I wanted, watched, I wanted them to see Florida not do very well. That's fair. Because that, that makes me happy. Yeah, that's true. We we walked out of that stadium. I checked that score, and I was already happy that we just won. And then I just I went up here. I was so happy. I, yeah. The to, to make it complete, I hope LSU curb stops Florida State. You know, so that all is right in the world. Uh, you know that that would make it though the weekend even better. That and a USF loss. Well, I mean, the you know, I don't yeah, expect them to win much anyway. So it's yeah. like I don't have to hope for them to lose. They'll find a way to do it anyway. That's that's fair. All right, uh, who wants to hear from John Rice Plumley, guys? Let's hear from John Rice Plumley. Bryson raises his hand. Very thank you, Bryson, for playing along. Let's hear from John Rice Plumley and his thoughts. Uh, thank you, Drew. Thank you, Nick. I appreciate the guys. We were on uh, the, the Wi-Fi at the bounce house. <laughs> <laughs> Bravo, sir. Bravo. 
<laughs> okay. Uh, on that note, uh, let's hear from John Wright Plumley if Wi-Fi allows it uh, here momentarily. Just a mess. Um, got to clean up turnovers, right? That's the that's the big thing that kind of sticks out to me. Um, but coach told me once, you're never as good as you thought you were on film. You're never as bad as you thought you were on film. And so, uh, go to the film, go learn from it. Uh, but this is good. It's a bad, uh, maybe turn over, stick over, stick out the line. And, um, gotta get those picks. John Rice, we had a couple of runs in the first half. There was a one we took off and kind of jumped up in the air. Gus just said a little bit ago, at some point he's going to have to tackle you. If you were yeah. those kind of things. What, what is it kind of your mindset when you take off running? Does that kind of go creep in the back of your mind that you have to make a slide once in a while? Yeah, I, uh, something that I've been you know, working on, trying to you know, protect myself a little better. Didn't uh, necessarily do a great job of it tonight. You know, um, find myself sometimes just you know, getting into competitor mode and, and just playing ball. And, um, but yeah, something I'm still, still working on, I'm still trying to get better at, um, and something I need to, to, to do more. All right, what are some things that you feel like you can do as far as you know eliminating those turnovers? I mean, I know you're a competitor, but you know, what is it that you feel like you can do is going into it and saying, hey, you know, they did not make that play, maybe throw it away, maybe eat it. Is it decision making? Is it just the competitiveness in you? Uh yeah, I mean so, sometimes, you know, uh you get a little greedy, you know, back there, but in other times you um you gotta know when it's a dead play and when to throw it away and other times it's just ball placement, right? You just gotta throw a better ball, um, chop it up to what it is, and, um, and and that's big, right? That's the I touch the ball every play. I've got to be, you know, super ultra aware of uh, protecting the football. And so uh, looking to, to to get better uh, at at that. Looking at the film this week and um, clean it up, going to the next week. All right, that was Mr. John Rice Plumley. Drew, your reaction to what he had to say? Well, uh, my first reaction is uh, we need to buy a mic, one of those like you know external microphones. Uh, that that's my first reaction. <laughs> John Rice Plumley mic'd up would honestly be must-watch TV. I'm not gonna lie. I mean that that can create some for some great you know bad lip singing uh, you know moments. Uh, you know, I think he kind of hit what we all agreed on is um, he needs to stop making so many hero moves and and putting his body on the line. You know, you're the quarterback. You got to be smart. You got to protect yourself. And and he admitted it as such. And, you know, it becomes instinct. You don't think you just do. And that can get you in a little bit of trouble. It's hard to break those habits. So you can tell he's trying to break those habits. It just didn't quite work out. Luckily, nothing happened, you know, but that's that's a case of rolling the dice. And as we know, last year, rolled the dice for a while, and then you know, that awesome. guys came up, and that was it. Yeah. That, I'll, I'll say this. When, you, when one of the main criticisms of your quarterback and of your leader is that he gets a little too competitive, is that it's really clear that he's definitely, like, the guy that is the right person to lead this team. I don't know what it is. There's just this kind of charm about John Rice that really makes him like a very charismatic. And he, and you, you notice all he's cognizant of all that stuff. And it's clear that he genuinely, you know, wants to do better on that, on that sort of thing. And I believe him on that. And I believe him on that. Really, John Rice is, is someone that I feel like the only person that can get in John Rice Plumley's way is John Rice Plumley. That and way. he has 100 percent nick what what let me ask you because you're in the stands right yeah i feel like Plumley, at least social media wise and that you know you always got to be careful with those type of things because i always feel like social media is the minority uh loud maybe sometimes but minority uh but plumley's kind of polarizing right like he I, and oh, i yeah. said this i i want to say i said this on the podcast recently about you know everybody over analyzes him every play He's not the most artistic passer, okay? He's yeah. not Patrick Mahomes or Dan Marino, but I do think he does some other things very well. What, What is the sense you get in the stands? Is is there a lot of pro plumbly? Is there some detractors? It, what, what's the sense you got in the stands tonight? I'll say this. My friend that I was sitting next to, Amber, she loathes John Rice Plumley. I don't know why. But like every time, like his name was right, just nodded his head down. You wanted to know how Nick, but he gets mad. Look at that—he was so disgusted 
Yeah, I don't get it. Like, listen, I'm guilty of it too. I sometimes over criticize the guy, but overall, he's a great player. And the thing is, I think she is in the minority. There was a lot more cheers for him, and I, th- I do think it's partly because Mikey Keene is gone, and the other quarterback on the roster is a guy we haven't seen play. So everyone's just kind of like, he's our guy. So I think that helps some of it. And to be, and again, he, he killed it today. So like, you know, there wasn't too much to criticize, and even during his mistakes, you know, the interceptions came when we were up by like 14, I want to say. And then the second one was when the game was basically over. So he's just kind of going through a YOLO shot. So no one was really <laughs> complaining. Better to make those mistakes now than when there's a lot more at stake, I that's, say. That's what I, yeah, that's what I think about. Like if he is serious Everybody and he can correct left. those mistakes, then like he'll be dangerous. Cause that's the thing. I think ultimately, like even as detractors, they have to admit this guy has the potential to be a really really good quarterback i think people just would like it if he could throw a little bit more and he didn't run and put his body on the line as much i think we all can agree with that true do you think this is is Plumley just going to be one of those guys that no matter what he does there's going to be people that are detractors and is it one of the or is there something he could do that wins everybody over uh Go undefeated. That'll win them all over. Yeah. Short of yeah. Trump championship. That'll do that yeah, too. Uh, short of no maybe problem. beat Oklahoma. Yeah. yeah, no, sure. but, yeah. No, I don't even think that's going to, because if he, if he has a bad game anywhere else, they're going to be calling for his head. Uh, you know, I, I don't think there, there are fans who don't want to be won over. They don't want to be, they, they want to be angry. And all that. You know, they're, you know, you know, they're, they're the ones who wanted Mikey Keene to still be here and all this. Stuff. Well, just accept reality. He's here. Keene's gone. You know, back your guy. Um, yeah. But I, I think they'll never really be satisfied. They will never be satisfied. Yeah. I think that's fair, right? I mean, that's part of it now. We live in this first, you know, take, debate, that you're, you know, you stick to your guns no matter what. I think that's a fair point, Drew. I think that's very accurate. Um, and it – you know, who knows? It could be like this with quarterbacks moving forward, too, because fans have been spoiled with Mackenzie Milton, obviously, and the success he had at Blake Bortles before that. Uh, that's, you know, the bar is very high for the quarterback position. Now that you brought him up, uh, can I get you guys' reaction to the story that Blake Bortles is apparently working in uh, construction right now? Man, I'm more power to him, man. You, you do what makes you happy. Oh, yeah. No, I'm not. I, I love it, man. Dude. Make, do what makes I, you happy. I, I'm, I'm absolutely, absolutely. Do what makes you happy. I, I think that's, I think it's really cool. It's like, you know what? Yeah, you're Blake building houses. Bortles, you're making a what difference. We all aspire to be. It's like the everyday guy who just makes it to the big leagues. Yeah. Limo Mark, big Drew fan right here. Observation uh, about the com- time, uh, the quick time. Yep. I didn't notice the clock rule really affected anything. Good observation, Drew more commercial times he did have a question for you drew which is uh, i'm sure you covered this but did everybody on the depth chart get some playing time draw i'll expand it from this side was there any players you thought you would play more or play that you wanted to see that didn't you didn't see what what's your thoughts well i wanted to see uh well i mean i i didn't want to see Corey thornton start uh yeah i wanted to see uh, uh the Corey patterson start uh but that's uh that's a that's a different story. Um, I I think everyone on the two deep pretty much got in a little bit of playing time, which is really that's really the goal. I mean, if you're going all the way to the third string, it's seventy to fourteen, and you're playing Temple. Uh, you know, this was this was important for all your rotational guys to get in action, and I think UCF had a good opportunity to do that. I think they waited a little bit too long to pull some guys. Um, you know, John Rice Plumley, them they should have been pulled out at the end of the third quarter. The game was in hand. They didn't. This actually happened uh, with I- Isaiah Bowser last year when they were winning big, and it's like take him out already, and they're playing him into the fourth quarter. And and you know Bowser had an injury history. The last thing you want was him to get beat up in, in a game that didn't matter. Uh, you know, same thing here. Something could have gone wrong, and then everyone's you know sharpening the pitchforks and lighting the torches for the coach's head for leaving them in. Uh, but for the most part, I. I well, I would have loved to have seen some of the the depth guys get a full quarter. Uh, they at least got a half quarter, and then it's somewhat meaningful. All right, a uh, couple more questions before we let you go, uh, Drew. Uh, Nick and Bryson will stick around with me to talk some others, uh, wrap up the show. But uh, going now to Boise State, we're going to get in a lot, I'm sure, this week throughout about the Boise State game. Concerns from this from this 
performance that you want to see, what things you want to see improve going into next week with Boise, uh, which is a very important football game, as we've I've, I've, I've said on many platforms. I think this is a big game as far as what the direction of this season for UCF from a bowl eligibility, from how many wins they can get, uh, and, and just optimism standpoint. What, what do you see they got to work on from this performance at all and just your overall takeaway going to Boise now? Well, I – the big key is going to be Russian defense. Uh, know the name Billy Bowens. Uh, this guy is legit. He's their, their running back, you know, the top guy. And, you know, he can carry a team. So uh, UCF's run defense is going to be have to be on point, but they can't oversell on the run is, you know, and overcommit because the defensive backs have been a bit suspect. I mean, we saw, you know, as we saw tonight, you know, the deep coverage was fair. What saved him was an inaccurate quarterback more often than not. The underneath passing, I Kent State was able to do a lot. Anything within 10 yards, they were able to, to move the ball. Uh, so uh, they've got some things to tighten up. Uh, they they got to respect the run. And, and you know, they, they're going to have a dogfight. You know, Boise is not an easy place to play. You know, Albertson Stadium, you know, with the blue, the blue turf and everything. Uh, it's a tough, tough, small, you know, stadium, you know, kind of like, you know, the bounce house. It's a tough, small stadium. You know, you're not, you know, I'm talking about 90,000 fans, but you know, they can get loud, they can get rowdy. And, you know, I'm actually happy that this team gets an early road, like real road test, as opposed to previous years when they haven't, uh, I think this will actually help them coming into conference play. Cause you are going to play in big stadiums. In some of those cases, Oklahoma, it's a big stadium, and you got to be able to handle that kind of atmosphere. This is a great way to work your way up to that. Saturday night kick, UCF Boise State will be FS1 again. Eric Collins and Gardner will be back on the broadcast. They kind of uh, teased that uh, at the fourth quarter there, Drew. So we'll have the same uh, As long as Gardner you know, doesn't have too many cups of coffee that day, I think we'll all be in for a good one. Scott's Week in Sports chiming in. Other, uh, man, we got a lot of new uh, people tuning in. It's awesome. I thought we looked good tonight, but we definitely need to improve next week against Boise. Well, I think that's fair. And now we're going to see Boise this weekend play Washington. Uh, so <laughs> they're going to start off with Michael Penix and the Huskies. So, uh, Drew, I'm sure you're going to keep your eye on that game. Absolutely. Uh, and I love Boise State to win that game. Well, that would help, right? The UCF Boise game hype it up even more, right? I mean, Boise's the Mountain West preseason pick to win yeah. the league, and some people think if the from a New Year's Six contenders, you're talking Tulane, USTA, and uh, maybe a Boise is the three top options from a G5 uh, level. Uh, absolutely, uh, at least in the case of Tulane and USTA, you know, uh, Texas San Antonio, they are yeah, UTSA. UTSA. Uh, they they've got to play each other. You know, in the com in the American Championship game, so one someone's getting knocked out, but I mean, Boise controls their destiny. And no doubt the key about is, it. And the key is win your conference, because you got to be a conference champion to 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 you know be the G five representative in the New Year Six. It's specifically conference <laughs> champion, so win your conference. Uh, the rest, you know, the rest will kind of fall the way they fall. All right, Drew, tell the audience what you're going to be doing. You've got columns I know you're working on on Black and Go Banner at .com. Tell us what yeah, you're doing. Um, yeah, uh, so so uh, obviously uh, not doing the knee-jerk reactions, not working in the press box anymore. Uh, the truth is UCF's too popular, and we can't send two guys there anymore. Uh, that That's just, you know, the fact that they have a small wow. press box. And, you know, uh, Kyle's a way better interviewer than I am, and I'll be the first to admit it. Uh, he's good at what he does. Nick, uh, invite so Drew to the stands. Come on, Nick. Get, well, him, a, get him a ticket. Come I, on, Nick. I, 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 actually, as we've been sitting here talking, started looking up games of like, okay, which one should I do? I, I can't do Oklahoma State, and I can't do Villanova for, for – uh, a combination of uh, personal and uh, um, holiday related reasons. Uh, but, you know, look into the other games. You know, you know, I'd love to get go to the Baylor game if it works out. Uh, but, you know, we'll see. We'll see. I have the only time, the only season that I haven't gone to at least one game, home game, was 2020 when you couldn't go to a home game, really. Uh, you know, other than that, I've been to at least one. So I've got to at least try to keep that streak alive. 
I think uh, we, we got we got to make that happen. Come on, but, we got to make. You- you can catch me on Twitter at Snap by Drew. I do have um, a weekly column where I'm basically told, write whatever the hell you want. Uh, so at least I'm trying to keep it UCF somewhat related. Uh, but, you know, try to, to have a little bit of fun with it while while Kyle uh, does his thing uh, covering the, the, the team itself. And you know what? Uh, I, I'm never short of an opinion. So if you have something you want me to talk about, don't hesitate to ask because I just might use it. That is true. You are definitely uh, not shy on opinion, sir. Uh, hey, that that's what you get here. Look, I, I did a terrestrial radio show from 9 p.m. to midnight on Sunday nights. I had to learn how to stretch things and, and create opinions on anything and everything just to have material uh, to cover three hours. I mean, yeah, you, you learn how to just pull something out. <laughs> Drew, oh, you probably back memories, man. I, mean, I did radio producing, man. That's like a daily grind. I, I remember. I do miss terrestrial radio, though. That was so much fun. I, there's some of it I miss, some of it I don't. Uh, pretty good. All right, Drew. We'll let you go. Get some rest, sir. Good, good work. Always. Uh, the good news is, you know, you're not at the games, but that means, you know, you'll be on here night shift. You'll be on here next week. Well, I, I originally had half of today and, and tomorrow off. I took those back, so I'll save the PTO for another day. And I just got to be up, uh, you know, by six o'clock in the morning to get my daughter ready for school. You know, just just the huge. Oh shoot! I didn't know that. Go ahead, get some rest, man. Oh. You're gonna need it. <laughs> if there, if it's PM, it's usually it's kind of weird if I'm going to bed with a PM next to it. Yeah, you know, this this is this is textbook. So, you guys have a great night. You know, go nights and charge on. See you, Drew. See you. <laughs> there you go, Andrew Glukoff joining us. I need to take right. Drew to uh, tailgating. I want to see what that looks like. Hmm. I think that has to definitely happen, doesn't it? That, 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 needs, that needs to happen. To happen. We'll make uh, it happen. Nick, what do you want to – give me your final thought from a, from a sta- fan standpoint, the stadium experience, anything you would advise UCF, hey, what, maybe you should consider doing this or, or whatever. Fix the Wi-Fi, for one. I don't care that we already talked about it. I'm, I'm going to say it again. Fix the Wi-Fi. It's annoying. Um, what else? Overall, just, I think as a fan, it was just, I miss football. And to finally be back there, it's just great to be back, man. I, that's all I can say. I'm at a loss wow. for words. Get emotional here. Well, you've been up since 5 in the morning. So I that's like wait. 17, what is that? 17, uh, nine, yeah, 19 hours in a row or something like that. I don't mm-hmm. know. I lost track. Uh, and, and, and you've been running. All right. Well, you've ready. been patient. You've been patient with us. So I appreciate your contribution. This is fun. You're going to every home game? Uh, I'm going to try to. I might miss a few because I got some races that I got to go compete to, which is why I got to get up in the morning to go run. Got to stay All in right, shape. Well, whenever you're at the home games, we'll definitely bring you on the show to give us the perspective from the stands. I think that's a fun deal. And, uh, uh, I think that was cool to kind of bring that perspective here on this uh, show. So thank you for that, yeah. Mr. Uh, Mr. Porcelli. And give me a little. Wait, time wait. Why through. do you have to walk three miles though? What What happened to the scooters that Bryson keeps bragging about? Like scooters. Oh. I don't live on. Well, I don't. Li- well, first of all, I'm pretty sure they close. They shut down during game days, so that doesn't even work. And I don't live on campus, so it wouldn't work either way. And I just I didn't have a ride, so you know. Wow. But, Hey, I, hey, I ran six miles. Walking three is easy. Okay. <laughs> I'm just glad the weather worked out where it wasn't like raining when you, were, you had to do Oh, it. yeah. Oh, that would have been terrible. So I hopefully you have a plan B next game or something. I don't know. You can go with that. Probably. All right, sir. We'll let you go. We'll let you roll. Take All it right. easy. Get some rest, sir. Appreciate it, guys. See you, Nick. Oh, Nick, of course. <laughs> Awesome uh, joining us there. Uh, May asking, where can I rewatch the game? Yeah, that's a good question, Bryson. I don't know. It's an FS1. Yeah, we we can't say go to ESPN Plus anymore. Not we for that one and not for Could next we, week. Now, maybe I the Fox say, Sports app? Maybe try that. that. I would try the Fox Sports Go app and see if they archive it. Otherwise, your best chance is they might re air the game at some point and DVR it that way. I would definitely, I mean, I'm a DVR person anyway. That would be my advice when Fox Sports goes. You're right. That's a great question, May. I, I don't know. Um, 
Bryson, if Bryson or I find out that answer, we'll tweet that out uh, and let you know. That's a good question because people get spoiled, right? That's the beauty of the ESPN platform. And, you know, from that standpoint is you're used to, hey, this game's archived on the ESPN apps, which except unless you're on Spectrum right now, you can't. But uh, subscriber, but that is an interesting, that is one thing about FS1. Fox has been a, has refused to join the streaming game as far as compared to like CBS and ESPN and things like that. Uh, but I would suggest look up your listing. Sometimes they'll re-air the game in the middle of the night. Uh, I'm actually trying to find out in my listing. They might re-air it. In fact, if you're still listening, they might be re-airing the game at, in a few minutes here. I uh, have it. I have it. I just looked it up. In fact, the yeah. game's airing, re-airing right now. It's re-airing right now. On FS1, this is terrible if you're listening on the podcast. This, so uh, we're live here on Night Shift. According, uh, according to what I'm seeing right now, if you go to www.foxsports.com slash replays, then you'll see I'm currently on it right now, and I see a option to replay the Kent State UCF game alongside the slog that was Nebraska at Minnesota. So that is probably a good place to go as well. Okay. Uh, very good. So, uh, there you go. Bryson would get the information there. That's good. Uh, that's fantastic there. All right. Uh, Bryson, let's wrap it up here quick. We've almost gone on two hours. We're going to go real quick here, uh, on some other UCF items of news. And, and, and I want to actually, we'll go through the Olympic sports. Then we'll bring up my favorite thing about today's UCF football game. What happened there? My favorite thing of the day, but, uh, Let's start with women's soccer because they were playing at the same time as football. It was a really big women's soccer non-conference matchup against top 10 ranked Penn State in Happy Valley. Penn State wins 1-0. Uh, Penn State scores in the 87th minute. You were tell you were following the match very closely. There was a controversial what? A red card on a UCF? Uh, they were playing shorthanded? Yes, they there was a red card on Sanja Holman in the fifty in the fifty second minute. So they were playing with one woman down for a lot of the second half, a large portion of it, and for a long while they still held off of Penn State, the number six team in the country, from scoring. Penn State outshot UCF twenty six to four overall and 12 to three in shots on goal. But Penn, Penn State was able to break three despite Caroline Dallara getting 10 saves. They did manage to get one by her in the 88th minute, right near the end. But I'll say this, the fact that they they shot three shots on goal out of four shots and, and it took Penn State 26 shots in order to get one goal on you. I would say that is an improvement from what we've seen from them in the Georgia and the North Florida game. Because this is the number six team in the country on the road we're talking about here. It's a very good Penn State team. My, my concern is, and just reading the stats, those that game was on Big Ten Plus. So obviously, unless you have that, you can't watch it. Lack of possession. Remember what we, we talked to Tiffany Roberts at Haydack, Bryson, prior to the home opener. And the thing that she was disappointed in the Georgia matches. They didn't win the, the time of possession, the ball possession. Georgia had too much of it, and it really it, it, it bit them at the end. That's how Georgia was able to score those two goals in the last seven minutes of that match because they kept pressuring, pressuring UCF. And I feel like it's the same thing in this Penn State match. I think, Bryson, they miss Adaria Rajahi, who's very good with the possession from the midfield, and someone that – Coach Sahadak told us they that they miss on the back line is Collins, uh, the under un, unheralded one, and I think that's just a, still a work in progress, and it feels a little bit like 2021, Bryson, when we covered this team, and how many times during that year did we talk about how Delisle had to bail them out and a ton of saves and didn't get that defensive support? So I think there's some work in progress here, and this team hasn't been. Healthy. They have an injury to O'Connor, who has really come in from Ole Miss, supposed to be a big playmaker for them to help replace a Daria Rajai, or even a you know from a possession standpoint and a playmaking standpoint. She's she hasn't played yet, so it, it's that's I think to me the story with women's soccer right now. I agree with you on that. I think they're they're get, they're two and two now. They come back home. They're going to be playing FAU on on September third. I believe that's Sunday night. Yes, and then 
they have USF after that. So th- the good news is, is that I think they're going to be home for a little bit, which is good because three of these, la- three of their first four games being on the road against power five opponents will certainly be just a, it, it, that's a very tough schedule for anybody to have. I don't think Limo Mark, he's asking about Sonia is getting that red card. If that means she's out for the next match. I don't think that applies in college. I think that's only an international. I could be wrong on that. I don't it's yeah. A good question. I don't believe so. We're I, gonna say no. Uh, we're gonna say no this, but make sure you follow Bryce and Bryson will call, talk text to his sources in the next day or two and get an answer officially on that, on the ruling on the red card situation between now and Sunday night. Uh Bryce, so you'll get that answer um, and work on that's a good question, Lima Mark, uh okay. on that uh deal. Real quick, men's soccer ranked thirteenth in the country, big match Friday night against NC State. They're coming off the win against Stetson, 2-1 to one last weekend. If they win this game, I think they got a shot to crack the top 10. We'll see. So we'll see if they can keep this positive momentum going. And then volleyball had their own home opener on Thursday, sweeping FIU in three. Uh, young UCF team, they got, they'll be tested the next over the rest of the weekend with Mississippi State on Friday night. That's a big one. Followed by Wake Forest on Saturday night, and then they wrap up with Alabama State. Jenny Maurer, first year uh, as the head coach at UCF after a long time as assistant coach. Uh, Abby Shomers, the redshirt freshman at center, played really well. Our, uh, good balance offense of players, but we're going to learn more about volleyball, I think, as this weekend goes on, Bryson. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know, that's we'll kind of leave it as that. We won't really spend too much time on the FIU match uh, from that standpoint. Yeah, they they Young were. Group. They are very young. They, well, I think one thing they really need to improve, end up improving on is their ability to finish because the only sets they, the only set they've lost so far this season was a third set against Navy in the season opener. And then in this game, they had a 171 hit percentage, I think it was, in the third set. And FIU got it to like 20, got up to, uh, to 20. Yeah, it was tight. Second set, the third set was tight. It was tight. FIU was scrappy there. And again, that's going to come with time. I mean, uh, Ava Armour, young freshman, looks has a lot of upside, but they're young. You know, they don't have that five-time All-American McKenna Melville. Uh, you know, until it's going to take some time. But like I said, I think, we're gonna... it set her. I think she's really – I was impressed with her athletic ability. I mean, she was – I think she blocked like three, four uh, balls in the net. She was a pretty impressive. Four uh, I think they'll be armed. Yeah. I, I think she'll be pretty impressive there. So uh, those are some of the stories there Olympics were. But I want to leave before we go. To me, the this was the best part of the day at UCF, and it happened at the football game. And it happened actually in the pregame during the radio show, the radio pregame show, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the UCF football game. Uh, if you wish, and obviously they always do a two-hour pregame show on, on the 96.9 FM on the radio dial, and then, of course, on the stream as well. And Mark, one of the segments was Mark Daniels always has a segment, the, the voice of UCF, a segment with the athletic director, Terry Mahadra. And they go over a bunch of subjects. Well, at the end of the segment, Mr. Terry Mahadra had some uh, news item, a little bit of a surprise for Mr. Mark Daniels. Let's listen in, uh, courtesy of UCF Knights here on social media, as well as on 96.9 The Game. We can get it up. You got it, Eric. Mr. Everything. Uh, that means a lot. Hey, man. Would you mean a lot to the school brand? I need to really be honest with you. Today I'm here and Nora Singh is coming in. But I wanted to let you know that the 2023 Hall of Fame Selection Committee selected you, Mark Daniels, to join this year's 2023 Hall of Fame. All right, there you go. I, I messed up, so I wanted to play it a second time because uh, 
a play there. But Mark Daniels announced as an inductee of the part of the UCF Athletic Hall of Fame class 2023. Uh, that was pretty awesome. Uh, Mark Daniels entering his 29th year as the voice of UCF Athletics. Next year will be his 30th anniversary. But that was pretty cool, Bryson. Terry Mahadra, got to give it to UCF. Eric DeSalvo, I'm sure, was involved. He was in there. And, they, and those, if you watch it on social media, it was pretty cool. They were in the press box, obviously, with a radio booth. Uh, they caught Mark, his daughters. That was the, the, the cheering was his daughters. The two daughters were there. Uh, Gary Paris, his longtime football analyst, was in tears. Uh, a group of people there, Bryce. And that was a pretty cool moment. Well played by UCF there. Fitting to break the news to him on the air, on the radio, on a UCF football broadcast. I agree. I think that was honestly like, let's face it. It's always fun to honor people that are on TV while they're working. I think back to when Jimmy Johnson was uh, told that he was getting inducted into the pro football hall of fame that um, I, I think it, you can kind of see in lieu of that, what Terry did here. And yeah, now he is the first person unveiled as part of this 2023 hall UCF hall of fame class i imagine that we'll probably hear the rest of it at a later date as usually in previous in the past few years there have been five after there have been five people that have been inducted so i imagine we'll probably hear more news about that at a later date but to see mark daniels as the first member of this of this induct of this class was it was really nice to see and very well deserved he's been with this been with this program a really long time and you know i'm glad that ucf has also been around long enough to have a broadcaster like that be inducted i mean you see all the legendary broadcasters at other schools that have been around for a long time now ucf has been around long enough where we have one of our own and that's mark daniels Amazing. We'll get more into this. You're right, uh, Bryson. They'll probably announce it. Couldn't come as early as Friday because they historically have announced Hall of Fame classes on a Friday. So I wonder if this now with this coming out to here during the game, do they come out the rest of the class on Friday? It's going to come soon. I've heard it's going to be a pretty big class and it's going to be a, a, a newsworthy of a class if uh, from what I'm hearing is accurate or not. But hey, very fitting for Mark, who's the, the soundtrack, right, for a lot of the UCF athletics started. When UCF was an independent going into uh, the MAC and the CUSA and the American and uh, now the Big 12. So very fitting uh, there and a lot of great support. Limo Mark say, yes, congrats to the voice of UCF, Mark Daniels, Hall of Fame. Much love for Mark, says Matt J. who said he was listening to his radio show when that happened. Dude was at, at loss for words. Uh, I believe Mark has tweeted out since uh, a reaction to that news, and I'm sure will be brought up uh, on his show, on the morning show, the Beat of Sports show. Uh, but I'm super excited. Mark's given me opportunities. One of the reasons I'm calling softball is because Mark lets me call softball. I filled in for him on uh, basketball and baseball, and uh, it's pretty uh, – well-deserved. Well-deserved, and I thought, like I said, well-played by everybody involved at UCF uh, to make that happen uh, and the surprise. That's one of the best surprises ever. It really is. It's one of those news. Uh, Mark did tweet out afterwards, quote, I am humbled and honored. One of the greatest moments of my career. I love this school and so blessed to get to do what I do. Thank you to everyone for your kind words. It means so much. Go Knights. Charge on. That's uh, fantastic. And we'll have more on this uh, developing story as well as UCF football uh, on black and gold .com as the class is announced. Whenever that happens, uh, me and Bryson will have a reaction show. I'm not going to say it will be on the day of the selections because with my luck, they'll announce it on the day that I have a broadcast for UCF Mississippi State and Bryson and I are trying to figure out how to do UCF broad, uh, games. But we will do a reaction show at some point uh, shortly whenever that class is announced, whether it's this week, next week, two weeks, three weeks, whenever. Uh, we will have a reaction show uh, and write about it as well. Uh, on black and go .com and on this very much same channel. All right, Bryson long night for both of us, long day for both of us, but this was a fun show. Uh, thanks to everybody for tuning in. I know this was a long show, but uh, listen, I mean, I don't have ESPN, so I got nothing else to do <laughs> with my cable situation. Um, hey, welcome back football. hey, welcome back football. Great to see you see a football back winning 56 to six. We'll have night shift every 
week after the UCF football game. Next week, uh, Bryson, you'll probably be involved, maybe. Or no, I don't know. what We're, we're going to have to figure out who's going to be on the show next week because I have a soccer broadcast. You might be covering soccer. I know uh, Drew. Maybe Drew and Kyle might be them. Maybe them, Nick. Maybe they'll take the show over. Who knows? But we will have a night shift after every football game. So make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel where you can watch the show live as well as on Facebook and uh, X, Twitter, however you want to call it. All the social media platforms are on live, and then the show will re-air uh, not only on the YouTube channel, you can watch it on demand there, but on our podcast feeds as well, where you will listen to the regular podcast. Thanks to Kyle Nash, uh, who joined us from the stadium. Thanks to Nick Porcelli, who joined us after walking three miles from the stadium. <laughs> since been up since 5 a.m. Thanks to Andrew Glukoff. Thanks to all of you. Thank you, Bryson, for joining us. Good Thank job. you, Eric. For Bryson, I'm Eric Lopez. We hope you've enjoyed this edition of Night Shift. Good night and charge on.